opportunity that we can't pass on. As the game of basketball evolves over the generations, so too do the tournaments that crown our champions. What began as an invitational in Tamaki Makoto has now morphed into this as the best 12 boys and girls teams descend on our nation's capital to vie for the opening two national titles on hold this year. Two titles, two courts, two days, let's go.
Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. So Hoops and Parks pilot is a first and shows local councils and sports trusts that if you have some oversight over community spaces, if you build it, people are going to play and Flexmere today has been a great example of that. Yeah, look, I've been part of the, the Hoops and Schools project um, pretty much since the outset and it's proven to be a wonderful formula for bringing kids into basketball, bringing communities together. Um, so I think this is a really natural progression to get more hoops in as many places as we can throughout New Zealand, bring communities together in different parts and um, let them experience how fun basketball can be being outside and playing with their friends. I mean, today's been awesome. It's so cool having this court set up, such awesome hoops. And, you know, now for these Flaxmere residents, it's 10 minutes or less to get to their local court and these kids can come after school, before school, hang out with their mates and get some shots up. I think it's definitely going to have a positive impact. I mean, as you can see right now, the, the turnout's been pretty good. So, uh, especially in Hawke's Bay, it's always pretty sunny out here. So I think there's going to be kids filling these courts up most days. So it's uh, definitely going to be a positive impact. Hoops like this are, are open for everyone at all times and we're just able to enhance the skill level of participants and get everyone who wants to be involved in basketball involved. Oh, this, this impact here is positive as, like very positive for, especially this area, this park has been desolate for many, many years so now just by putting this hoop, you know, in here it's, it's going to attract a lot of the youth here and, and it's positive to, you know, encourage other councils to support this initiative, Hoops and Parks, man, it, it's, a, it's a really positive vibe, especially on a day like this. I'd love to to see this out in you know places like Taranaki, even Kaiti, you know, it's, it's really positive for the youth and, and it's an opportunity for, for them to find a safe haven, uh, you know, a place where they can call, you know, hang out and chill with their mates and yeah. What about you, son? It's awesome. <laughs> um, I've had heaps of fun, I've been really enjoying it, uh, especially when we did the activity, like the one where you could choose which side to go to, because I won that and I got the singlet and it's just been awesome, yeah. It's great, um, there's a lot of people who can have a chance to actually do it because um, we haven't had these type of fancy hoops before here and it's really great. This isn't about what we wore back in the day. We're going to go now. We're going once. We're going twice. No more offers. Scored! It's about being trusted to get a better result for our clients since 1973. The forest should never have been taken off this steep hill country that's eroding and it makes absolute sense to a forest those hills. What we're doing here is using the exotics to help that process get established. We're looking at a managed transition process where those pines are progressively thinned as the native understory establishes. We're trying to do several things here. Soak up carbon, establish native forest, and we're trying to improve biodiversity. You're achieving an awful lot with one program of activity. Want to catch a fuel bargain with Caltex and Supergold? Scan your Caltex at flybys or airpoints for six cents off per litre with pumped. And show your Supergold card for an extra two cents off. Ah, feels good.
Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. One of our biggest problems we have in New Zealand is our lack of facilities, uh, the lack of ability for kids to be able to just go in and shoot hoops. But our hoops in schools, hoops in parks project enables kids to be able to get out there and just have a go, you know, just be able to shoot hoops and, and have no boundaries, just go out there, have some fun. Um, by not being able to get inside to a lot of facilities, this solves a lot of our problems. We're seeing the hoops that we've already installed just be so well utilised every time you drive past the school that's got these hoops in it, there's always kids using them. We know it's going to increase participation in our sport, which is a great thing. Yeah, hoops in schools means to me just a lot of opportunity that uh, when I look back and reflect on my experience, at home in Paul and Whangarei and in the schools and there wasn't a lot of hoops around um, but what, there was the odd hoop and we'd always meet there, all the, uh, the locals and um, we'd have a ball, have fun and that was a game for all athletes that played all different sports. It's fantastic to see the ongoing growth of the Hoops and Schools program across the country uh, as we continue to go into different regions. Seeing Tamariki and, and Rangatahi continuing to have fun through better accessibility is just priceless. Uh, and the true value for us is seeing the positive impact it's having across communities here in New Zealand. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, we've been able to put 24 hoops into 12 schools right across the province. They were installed a month or so ago and already we've seen the impact that it's had with kids getting out in there and playing them outside of school hours and the weekends, it's really had a huge impact on, on the game. It was good to get into the community today and um, see the kids just having fun and being able to, you know, have access to these amazing hoops that have been put into new communities because um, a lot of schools don't have access to these things. Now, looking at this um, initiative of putting a lot more. My welcome back to day one of the Boston New Zealand Secondary School Nationals 3x3 comp. We've already started to get underway, unfortunately. So we have Otago Boys in the blue and HIBS Hut International Boys School in the red. I believe it's 1-0 to start for Otago Boys. Could be 2. I could be wrong. Otago Boys commits the Hutter straight away. Otago Boys placed second in the South Island Regional Competition. Just a small edge of a loss against St. Thomas Boys. So they are the favourites coming into today. For the boys in red, we have Aubrey Chunga. Bruno Thompson, Noah Wright, Anaki Zabella, and Cooper Bakuru. And for Otago boys, we have Oak Chisholm, Mitchell Robinson, Harry Bezit, Karina Kayao, and Tom Wilson. Kuru Tautuku on way here for Hutt Valley. A chance to even it up, and it's good. A lot of ball movement here early for Otago boys and Akuru Fifirua is good for Oak Chisholm. He leads the way for this Otago boys team. Backdoor cut, lovely, but smokes the bunny, unfortunately. Obviously no help side defense in a 3x3 game, so you can expose a lot of wide open layups as Oak goes two from two. Akuru Fifirua once again back to back for Oak. Puts Otago boys up 6-2 now, a fast paced game to start. No good for that Kuru Fifirua and a big two up for Otago boys. Another one, Tom Wilson this time. That's three Kuru Fifirua's three positions in a row. Obviously if you can stack those you make it pretty unguardable. Everything but the bucket there 
for Hutt Valley. And a huge rebound. 7-2 for Otago boys here. No good in that Kuri Fifirua. Shooting slowed down a little bit. Hutt Valley now have a chance to get a bucket on the board. But I believe they didn't clear the ball there. I believe we've gone out of bounds. So ball will be checked back up the top there. Hart Valley ball with a chance to edge away at this lead a little bit more. Only two points so far. No success from beyond the arc just yet. Again, like I said, a huge part of the 3x3 game. Great wall up defense there from Otago boys. Another Kuru Fifirua on ways. No good. But an offensive two upper. Off the Papa Muri, and that's good. Kuri Fifi Rua, number four for Otago boys. They're making themselves very hard to guard at the moment. So much value on that Kuri Fifi Rua and the game of 3x3s. Three we see that once again. And a timeout to no surprise from Hutt Valley. Wanting to talk about their containment. Possibly a better option just to force the Tago boys to put the ball on the ground and get to the room as opposed to putting up points and stacks with those Kuru Fifi Ruas. Like we spoke about, so much value in being able to shoot the two ball. Spoke to Pete Van Hassel, who's the head coach of the 3x3 Tall Blacks, and he said, if a player is relatively athletic, they can guard and they can shoot the lights out of the ball, they will make a 3x3 team simply because there is just so much value in that shot. As we can see from a Tiger Boys success from beyond the arc here in the morning. See what Hutt Valley can cook up here. Nice action there to get a shooter open. That's good. Kuru Fifi Rua good now for Hutt Valley following the trend. 9-4 with five minutes, seven minutes to go. My apologies. And a great defensive position. They come up with a steal. Can they go back to back? No good. Tago will let the ball go out of bounds. Out of the Kua Pizza. See that one more time. Nice down screen action to get a shooter open. Right in his rhythm straight away. I like that. Clear screen for Oak. He decides to reject and go downhill. Great wall up from Hutt Valley. And they go downhill off the back of that. Couple of missed bunnies here early. Both sides. A miss laps all the time, no big deal. No miss bunny on that one. Otago boys now up to t up to ten. Great wall up defense there. The basket's not going to count. It's going to be a travel call. Team Gray picking up on that one. That score you see on your screen is now correct. 10-4 with six and a half to go for Targo boys. They're looking pretty comfortable in this game and a great defensive effort there. Ball goes Kuopita, goes out of bounds. Nice to deny the post-entry catch there. Obviously another huge part of a 3x3 offense is getting that high post-entry catch to trigger some kind of other offense. Rejects that handoff and goes downhill. Wide open, obviously. No weak side defense in 3x3. Oak looking for his third Kudu Fifi Rua of the game. Connects 12-5 now for Otago boys. Huge shooting display from these boys. But answers right back to Hart Valley with another Kudu Fifi Rua. It's raining in here. And finally we've gone a little bit cold. Manages to keep the ball inbound as Hutt Valley. Another Kuru Fifi Rua on the way. Would love to see the shooting percentages for these ones. No good for that one either. My goodness, they are putting these up in numbers. 12-7, 5 and some change. Don't think we'll go all the way in this one. Lovely spin move there. No good on the touch but a nice little spin cycle good to see them getting downhill a little bit more catch and shoot no good everything but off the Papa Moody and off the rim Oak for his fourth of the game no good
Denies the post entry being fronted. Hapel is going to look to go downhill and get the bucket, and they do, closing that gap now to four. Tom Wilson deciding he wants to just go downhill. Draws the hutter. A lot of physicality in 3x3. That's a huge part of the game is that the refs allow a lot of physicality, but obviously you have to draw the line when need be. Hutt Valley commits the hutter. And one at Kudu Totuku here for Tom Wilson could extend the lead to five. And he does. Never looked like it was missing. Hutt Valley want to answer now. Kudu Fafirua is good. Oh, my goodness. It's raining here in Wellington. And I'm not talking about outside. Great answer, though, for Otago boys. Get one on the board. 14-10. We've got four and some change. This could cut it to two. Can't get the friendly roll, unfortunately. Karina tries to go downhill, but swiped away nicely by Hutt Valley. Forcing a target to reset. It's a Mata Anu. Reset up top. It's actually going to be Hutt Valley ball, my mistake. They run that same down screen flare to get Hutt Valley going downhill. Wide open look and a great finish. Contested well. Oak, colder hand at the moment. Still a three-point lead for Otago, but not super comfortable. The spin cycle, but gets his own offensive two up. It closes the gap now to two. And they're just going to pull. Nothing but the Papa Muri on that one. Great downhill attack, but they've, they've whistled for the Hutter. And rightfully so. Obviously, there's a lot of physicality allowed, but as soon as you start banging elbows and getting your hands in there, Team Grey will whistle you for it. A little bit of a wrinkle out of that down screen action. Still Hart Valley get the bucket and the Hutter. The hoop and the harm. Chance to tie it now. We'll see that one more time. Strong attack to the rim. Draws the foul and a great finish. Bit of a run here for Hart Valley. Obviously, the Kuru Fifiruas have slowed down for Otago boys. Nice use of the shot fakes to go downhill. And again, it whistled for the Hutter. These last few positions have just been hands fouls on all of them. Sending these boys to the Kuru Totoku line. chance to chip away and get a lead once again for Otago boys utilizing the shot fakes really well bodies flew at that one that was a no-brainer for team gray let's see that one more time lovely action and yeah that was a an absolute no-brainer can Otago boys regain the lead with the bank off the papa muddy something you don't see too often these days is a bank free throw just out of bounds. A little bit of an errant pass. Gets the ball. Kua puts up. We're going to see a Tamati Ano up the top for Otago boys. Chance to extend that lead a little bit further. Edge closer to that 21 point mark. Oak. I believe that is his fourth or fifth Kuru Fifi Rua. Three point lead now and only four away from that 21 point mark. Tiger boys, they let it slip a little bit, but they're back now. We're going to see that again one more time. Lovely flare screen there. No communication, unfortunately, on that one, and, and bodies weren't set a little bit too late. Karina, lovely stop and pop. Gets his defender up in the air. That's why the famous McDowell always says, leave the ground second defensively. You give up easy points. Four-point lead now for Otago boys. Will they go the distance, or will they get to the 21 Offensive two upper creates a second chance opportunity. And another Hutter for Hutt Valley creeping up. I believe that it's their fourth now. It's amazing what second chance opportunities can do for you in the game of 3x3. One Kudu Totoku for Oak here. Could get again ever so closer to that 21 point mark. Good on the Kudu Totoku. 19-14. Two and a half minutes still to play. Important for Hutt Valley here to get a bucket on the board and then a stop. They're one step closer to it. 19-15, have to get a stop here. Disallow anything for Otago boys, especially that exact shot right there. 
no good. Hutt Valley now have a chance to tighten that gap just a little bit more. No good on the Kuri Fafirua. No good on that Kuri Fafirua. Bodies flying everywhere. We do go Kulpita out of bounds. Nerve levels are high. My heart's beating pretty fast at the end of this game. That's what we love to see, though. Denies the flare screen. Tom Wilson just wants to body in the paint. Oak wants to call game. Doesn't do so. Hutt Valley alive to see another possession. Not a Tom Wilson has anything to say about it. Looks to go to work. Can't get that one to go. Hutt Valley. Fortuitous. For them, these last couple positions for Otago boys just not going their way. Can they get something to go here and eduate that lead a little bit more? Oak, a lot of physicality there. Can they put an end to this once and for all? No, they cannot. Off the tupper. Looks like it's going to be position of Hutt Valley. I'm incorrect. It's going to be Otago boys position. I don't think the refs know actually. Otago boys position. Chance to get a lead or win the game. Wowee. Free as a bird. 20 to 15 now. One point away are Otago boys. Hutt Valley forced to put up shots now. And they have to get a stop. One more point and it's all over. Great wall up defense there. Can they convert on this position? That's the big question. They cannot. Just under one minute to go. We may actually go the distance in this one, folks. Errant shot from Karina there. Kurufa Firua is no good. Obviously the three-point shooting, sorry, two-point shooting just cooled down a little bit. Driving kick is good. Fires the extra away. And a travel call there. Just moving the pivot foot. 30 seconds to go. Are we going to go the distance? I think we might. I said about a few minutes ago we wouldn't. I take that back. I think I'm eating my words now. Tipped out of bounds but stays with Hutt Valley. 30 seconds to go. Quick Kuru Fifirua is good. 20 to 17, interesting. Hot Valley can get a stop here. This may be interesting. And they do. Unforced error for Otago boys. Let's take a look at that Kudu Fafidua. Great quick shot. Knowledge of the game clock. Almost, ah, uh, and it's an errant turnover, unfortunately, for Hot Valley. Gives the ball right into Otago boys' hands. They're looking to put an end to this. But the ball goes corporate, cool, so these boys just really want to go the distance today. Three seconds here for Hutt Valley. They're going to have to throw something up. To no! Good if it is good on the buzzer. Unfortunately, to no amends. A slight one point win for Otago boys here, 20 to 19. We'll see that buzzer beater there. The one hand throw, that's pretty impressive actually. <laughs> 20 to 19 for Otago boys. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with some more great basketball in just a second. on YouTube. Hey Tom, it's been a while. Where have you been? Sorry man, I've been busy. Come and see what we have been doing.
It's been a few years since we were here for the launch of the very first Hoops in Schools in South Auckland. Tell me what sort of impact these hoops have had in the school. Every day the kids play outside, um, morning, afternoon, morning tea, lunch times. Um, they're always outside playing basketball. We also run a sports academy for an hour a day. Um, half the group is doing basketball and the other half is off doing another sport. So we use it all the time. <laughs> That's good that they're being used. Uh, what about after school and the weekends and things? Is it uh, somewhere where you know the community can kind of come together and play some basketball? Yeah, so um, after school we have our after school program who use this one, um, the one behind us quite a lot. Um, and then our gates are always open for the community to use all of the courts and um, facilities here. So, awesome. yeah, they're getting used quite a lot, especially on days like this. What do you think this facility means to the kids to have a hoop like this at their school? I think it's awesome. Um, like you said, the accessibility. Sometimes um, if they're playing in like the community courts, there's the older kids or the, the adults that are kind of taking up the court. So to have it here at school, um, they're always using it. They don't feel pressured to be moving off anytime soon. And yeah, it's nice to see them using a lot of it. Um, I've seen massive numbers grow. Eh? Like uh, we started in the beginning of the year, we started a holiday camp and our numbers were like 20 kids. And now we've got 70 kids in the last holiday camp we just had. The interest has grown heaps. Having these basketball hoops out here just helps because a lot of the kids don't get that outside of school. Yep. So um, for them to be able to come and have a space where they can just fall and especially in the holidays. And are you guys running any sort of competitions outside of school that the kids are able to get into? Whakahaere mātou, ko mātou kura i tētahi kaupapa, koe tūkohu ki te Wharehaki Matina o Moana Nui Akiwa, ki te Māngere Town Centre. Um, ki reira, ka whakapakari pūkenga mātou, ka prakatihi, a ka ako rātou i ngā ture. Whakahaere mātou i tētahi whakataitai ki te taha o Legacy Wildcats. Um, ki reira, ka tākoro rātou me etahi atu kura o tēnei rohe o Māngere. I'm Trevor Johnson and I'm a sheep and beef farmer from the Forgotten World Highway. Some of the country we bought was quite steep and difficult. We have pushed those blocks to pine trees, a thousand hectares into forest and seven thousand hectares will stay in grazing. To me it's just the best use of land. If you've got land that is not so productive it's a marvellous way of increasing your income. Some more great basketball on the way. We've got the Wahine this time. Kaipoi Girls High versus Hastings Girls High. Kaipoi placed second in the South Island competition. Can't say I'm totally aware of where Hastings Girls placed. We're in the wonderful Windy Wellington this morning. I'm Maya Williams and I'll be taking you through the rest of this round. Obviously scoreless so far for both sides. Teamless, we've got Maddie Gasconi. Aaliyah Newton, Anika Shaw, Hannah Tolley, and Eva Perry for this Kai Boy girls' side. For Hastings, we have Nadia Tateri, T. Kura Harris, Mikey Thompson, Charlotte Tulao, and Peyton Tuala Fata for Hastings. Kai Boy now with one point on the board. Shot clock violation for Hastings girls. Seen some great basketball so far here today. Very fast paced game. Had a great display of shooting in the game just previous to this one. Wouldn't be, ex wouldn't be surprised if we saw it some more from this side. Hannah Tolu gets her own offensive two-dupper and points off the glass. Early 2 nothing lead for Kai Poi. Hastings, no real size to match Hannah Tolu, which might prove to be a little bit difficult for these guys. Nevertheless, they try to go downhill. Great swarming defense for Anika Shaw. Another shot clock violation, back-to-back -back shot clock violations for Hastings. Not a super positive thing for them. Kaipoi looking to go downhill. Aaliyah Newton, a seasoned 3x3 player, was not New Zealand under-17 3x3 team just a few years ago that competed in Malaysia, played for the West Coast Rapids in the basketball New Zealand 3x3 professional tournament last year. So has got herself some nice experience behind her. 
And once again, a shot clock violation. Don't know if I've seen a lot of games with three shot clock violations back to back to back to back. Testament to the really great defense. Kai Poi has come out here playing Hannah Tolu back to the basket. Another offensive two-dapa creates a second chance opportunity. Kai Poi cannot capitalize on that one. Bodies all on the floor. Gonna see a jump ball. Maka Topatu. And in 3x3, if you didn't know, that goes the way of the defense. As a way of rewarding good defense. Brilliant rule. I think we should do that in 5-on-5 five five as well. Nevertheless, ball goes to Kai Boy in the hands of Alia Newton. High post entry. Knocked away, though, by Hastings girls. They're going to have to clear it. Still searching for their first points of the game. And another turnover. Four turnovers in a row. Unforced errors here for Hastings girls. Really punishing for them. Kaipoi, though, doing a very good job defensively. On ball pressure, just forcing them to make errant decisions. It's exactly what you want if you're coach Kaipoi. Alia Newton spins on her left hand. Read well, though, by Hastings girls. Part of being a good defender is being able to anticipate what your opponent is going to do. Another turnover there. So Hastings really struggling at the moment. Can't generate a whole bunch of offense. Aaliyah Newton for the Kudu. Fifi Rua, no good. But another offensive two upper for Hannah Tolley. Another one. And it was inevitable. Ahara. You're going to see that one more time. Offensive two upper number one. Offensive two upper number two. And draws Ahara on that one. And a Kudu Totoku on the way for Hannah. Chance to put her team up. One more point. And everything but a little toilet bowl. Hastings girls now desperate to get a point on the board. Low scoring game for these guys. I believe it's their first game of the day. So probably still warming up. Getting used to playing. Nice pull up. Jay is good for Hastings girls courtesy of Mikey Thompson. They'll be relieved with that one. Kuru Fifirua is good for Kai Poi. Can't just trade buckets if you're Hastings girls. Great job ripping and going downhill for Nadia. Closes that gap just a little bit more. Rejects the on-board as Anika Shaw and finds a rolling Hannah Tolley. Kai Poi playing a very nicely spaced game. Hannah Tolley forces that jump hook there. Hastings girls now with an opportunity to close that gap. They've found a little bit of momentum now. They're easing into this game. Nice drive and kick goes to Nadia. She utilizes her spin move. And another shot clock violation. Obviously a shorter shot clock in 3x3. Only 12 seconds as opposed to the 24 that we're used to. So speeds up the offense a little bit. And if you're not used to that, it can be very hard to get used to that kind of timing. Huge block. Never mind, the foul was called. I'm not 100% sure what the call was there. Sorry, but short, so I can't see the referee. But nevertheless, turnover, and it'll be the ball of Hastings looking to go downhill. Nice driving kick. And they get a bucket, closing that gap just to one now. Six minutes to play in this Wahine 3x3 game. Huge hara on Hannah Tully there. Again, finds herself at the Kuru Totuku line. Kaipoi do a very good job at utilizing her. She sets a lot of nice on-ball screens and their guards coming off can find her really nice in her pocket. No good on the Kuru Totoku, but another offensive two upper off the tupper. Going downhill is Hannah Tolley. Can't get that one to go. Hastings with an opportunity to tie it up or even take the lead with a Kuru Fifirua. Kaipoi doing a very good job just to disturb them, force them out of any offensive rhythm. They get their own offensive rebound. Kuru Fifirua is no good. I like the confidence with shooting that. Charlotte Tuilei, but no good. And Kai Poi now with an opportunity to extend the lead a little bit more. Aaliyah Newton will see that all day long. She's just going to go downhill to her left hand, and it's very hard to stop. Nadia is going to do the same thing right back. She seems to be the centerpiece of their offense. A huge... Firepower for them. Great box out. 
Low scoring game here, like we said earlier. Nadia's going to pull. Kudu Fifirua is good. Hastings girls take their first lead of the game. Just goes to show how quick the tunes can change in a game of 3x3. And again, how valuable that Kudu Fifirua shot is to this kind of game. Kai Point now looking to even things up. Errant pass goes out of bounds. Hastings now with an opportunity to extend the lead again for the first time. Nadia Kudu Fifi Rua. She's got the hot hand. Someone put a hand up on her. Extends the lead now. Eight to five. Kaipoi desperately need an answer and swarming defense results in a hutter. See that one more time. Caitlin Clark esque. Hand down, man down, they do say. Needing to check ball on that one. Off ball screen defended well by Nadia. She falls over though. Aaliyah Newton doesn't capitalize on that surprisingly. Nice little stop and pop in the short roll for Hannah Tully. Kai Point now just struggling to get any points on the board. Momentum swing in favor of Hastings girls. Will Aaliyah Newton just look to go downhill? She will on her left hand. Usually successful, no good for that one though. Would have been a timely bucket for Kai Point. Nevertheless, the hot hand, Nadia, decides to stop and pop that one, and good! She really is looking like Caitlin Clark out there. Anika Shaw, typically a good Kudafifirua shooter. Proves me right. 9-7 now, just under four minutes to go in this ball game. 3x3, a super fast-paced game. Things can happen very quickly, so this one is going to come down to the wire, I feel. And another... Shot clock violation. These girls obviously taking their time trying to find quality shots. And Nika Shua can't get the back-to-back -back Kurufifi Ruiz to go. But a hustle and bustle. But comes up with the offensive two-dapa. Finds a cutting Anika Shua. Lovely finish. Closes that gap now. One point in it and immediately they get the turnover. Can they even Stevens this one? They can. Nine all. Three and some change. We've got a ball game on our hands. Nadia can't find her Caitlin Clark range just that time. And Nika Shaw doing a great job at recognizing the momentum was going the other way and attacking downhill. Ball in the hands of trusty Aaliyah Newton. And shot clock violation this time in the way of Kaipoi. These teams obviously taking their time trying to find the right quality shots. Downhill attack and great wall up defense there. Kaipoi looking to take the lead. No good on that one. Aaliyah Newton just trying to force that spin move. Not lots going on here for Hastings. Taking their time once again. Hannah Tolley just hands in the passing lane on that one and converted by Aaliyah Newton. They take the lead once again. Nadia just can't find her hot hand, unfortunately. Let's take another look. Anticipation there for Hannah Tolley gets the steal and a wide open Aaliyah Newton. Two and a half minutes. No good on the Kudu Fifirua, but once again, an offensive two upper generates another position for these guys. See what Hastings can do here. They can either take the lead or they can even it up. Utilizing the shot fake well is Nadia and athleticism. Showing near the rim. No good, though. Great wall up. Swarming defense. Can't keep it alive, can Kai Poi. Hastings now with the chance to reset. Tamata Ano. Give them some time to breathe. No good on that Kurufifi Rua from Charlotte. Too loud. Nadia's got nowhere to go, unfortunately, which results in a turnover for Kai Poi. One and a half minute left. Looks like it's about to be 11-9. Still doable for Hastings girls, but they've got to look after the ball, which they did not do there, resulting in yet another point for Kai Poi. 12-9. Hastings got to put numbers on the board now. And what better person to have the ball in the hands of than Nadia. Hot hand. Could have Rua closes the gap. They have to get a stop now. And Kaipoi know it. One minute to go. 
And they get a steal. Hastings now. Nadia no good. Looks really tired and I do not blame her. I'm tired just sitting here watching these guys go at it. Three seconds in the key. Violation. Samata Ano restart for Hastings. And again, another opportunity for them. Wouldn't be surprised if ball goes in the hands of none other than Nadia. No, I'm wrong. Bucket is good and we are tied at 12 apiece. Driving kick for Anika Shaw. They do not have Elia Newton who seems to be the focal point of their offense on the floor right now. A benefit for Hastings girls. Ball over to Nadia. Looking to go downhill on Anika Shaw. Contained really, really well. Shot clock's probably winding down. Could if you do it, no good. Off the hands of the Kai Point team. 18 seconds. Even Stevens. To no surprise, Aaliyah Newton back on the floor. Have to get a stop here. Hannah Tolley, great walling up defense. One more position. What can Kai Point do? Aaliyah Newton, reverse layup to take the lead. Two seconds on the clock. Let's take one more look at that. Ice in the veins. No good on the shot attempt for Hastings girls. And that'll be it, folks. And now by the win for Kaiapui High over Hastings girls, 13 to 12. A really well fought effort from these two teams. And that's what it is all about. We're going to take a quick break here and be back with some more great basketball. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through a really tough time. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved with it. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo, this is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on, and so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools, it really is. Okay. Yes. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. We're gonna go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't. I just wanna welcome everyone here today, all you beautiful woman, all you people.
Nationals. An absolute ball game we have on our hands. Rotorua Boys versus Rolleston College. I'm Maya Williamson and I'll be your commentator here today. Let's quickly boost through these team names. We're on tight schedule this morning, unfortunately. Rian Druitt, Max Malloy, Real Wheaton, Alatua Tiatia and Suzuki Shuto for Rolleston College. For Rotorua Boys, Sako Bennett, Manaya Hiki, Cooper Ipo, Xander Masters and Karis Papanui. Rotorua boys looking strong already this morning. Had a good win against Parapara Umu College this morning. A very strong, dominant win for them. And an early lead, 2-1 here. Xander Masters, the man of the hour. Good from the Kurufifi Rua line. Has had some showings in the South NBL with the FI in the Rapid League. The new innovation for the South NBL this year. And is showing his prowess. Manai Hiki with the offensive two up uh, Bullying his way in. Can't get that one to go, unfortunately. Rolleston College, vintage Miami Heat jerseys. And a intentional foul there to get some subs in. The Hara Mahi Maraka wanting to get some subs in and roll some bodies. Referee just talking about the proper way to check a ball. Obviously, 3x3 made me new to some of these boys. Rianne Drew, it decides to reject the on ball. Can't get that one to go, though. Rotorua now with a, another opportunity. Xander Masters, ball in the low post with the cross screen. Coming on the opposite side. Karas Papanui tries to go downhill and can't get that reverse to go. Backdoor cut is good. But rolls in college, everything but the finish. All air on that one from Karis Papanui. Saw him hit a few though this morning against the Parapara Umu College team. Don't want to give him too many open looks. Rolleston College only one point on the board so far. Hunting their second. Have had a few opportunities. But everything but. They convert on that one. Close the gap. 4-2 now. Still in favour of Rotorua boys. Skip pass. Kuru Fifirua is good. This possibly is their strongest asset. Is their two-point shooting to Kobe Bennett. Connects on that one. Again, a valuable shot in the game of 3x3. Means so much with so much weight on it. If you can knock them down, you can say bye-bye to your opponent pretty quickly. Cooper Ipo tries for one of his own. Can't get that one to go. Going to be a football. And we'll go the way of Rolleston College. I like I didn't give enough justice to how nice those uniforms are. Again, like vintage Miami Heat vibes. Good job, Rolleston College. Manai Higate catches his mouth guard before it falls on the ground. On ball action rejected. Rolleston College chooses just to go downhill. Foul drawn against Manai Hiki. So the Hutter results in a Kudu Totoku. See that here one more time. This horn set up, a typical one that we see in the game of 3x3. On ball screen came in, but decides to reject. Kudu Totoku is good. Rolleston College eat away that lead a little bit more. 6 3 now. Xander Masters was free on that cut, but Manai Hiki decides to go downhill himself. I'm not sure if that was a shot attempt or a pass or if it got blocked. Either way, Rolleston College come up with it. Just stuck in the corner over there. Rotorua boys doing a good job, forcing them into that baseline. Offensive two upper though. Seen a few of those already. Obviously, only three guys on the court. And a lot of space results in a lot of offensive two-duppers. But 3x3 is a game where you can be physical and you can afford to really put your body on the line in order to box out and get the job done. Referees having a little bit of a word about clearing the ball, I believe. Obviously, there's a few little rules not everyone knows about in the game of 3x3. So these boys are learning as they go. Kuba Ipo. Kuru Fifi Rua is good. Once again showing their two-point land prowess. Lead up to 8-4 now. I looked away for one second and now they have another layup. I don't even know what happened. 9-4 now for Rotorua boys. Ahara committed on the perimeter. One you don't see a lot of in 3x3. That replay is actually helpful for me. Great steal and pressure there from Tako Bennett. Again, you can be super physical on the two-point line when you're playing 3x3. Referees 
Allow a lot of physicality. Low post catch for Xander Masters. Spins and just goes to his left hand with ease. He plays well beyond his years, that's for sure. Nice little gets action. The upward handoff. A Pete Van Hassel favourite. Flare screen. Cooper Ipo. Kuru Fifirua. No good on that one. Ooh, Papa Muri. Sander Masters does a great job to wall up. And disallow that offensive Tudapa that Rollison have loved so far. Can't let him have it open. Kuru Fifirua. 12-5. Now, for Rotorua boys, I believe a huge part of their offense is those two-point shots. Rollison College, though, staying in it. Nice little midi. One of my favorite parts of the game. Xander Masters, can I have this dance? Thank you very much. No good. Offensive rebound goes the way of Rolleston. Can they hit a Kuru Fifirua of their own? No, they cannot. But again, huge pin block against the backboard. Just when you thought Rolleston had an open layup, Cooper Ipo says it not in my house. Thank you very much. Can they capitalize on this? Yes, they can. Kuru Fifirua. Is it going to count? They did call a foul. See that Kuru Fifirua success. It is going to count. 14 to 6 with 5 and some change to go. Nice little Iverson cut to get Curtis Papanui on his left hand. Defender Bell well by Rand Druitt. Manai Hike cruises to the rim. Probably the easiest one point he's going to get all day. 15 to 6 now. Leeds getting a little bit comfortable for Rotorua boys. As to Ko Bennett, just an absolute menace defensively. Someone you don't want to come against, that's for sure. Foul committed, I believe, by Rolleston College. Only their second hutter of the game. Making it hard to get into their off-ball actions. And the Masters didn't know that pass was coming. Regains possession nonetheless. Strong move and a rear miss from Zander Masters. I like having him in that low post. Really nice. Off-ball cut. Poked away. Manaya Hike. Just so casual with it. So nice. 6-16 now. Rotorua boys slipping away with this one. And to Ko Bennett. Defensive menace. Gets another steal. Xander Masters utilizes a shot fake. The great thing about this Rotorua boys team, just so much depth. They have a team of four to five actual legitimate scorers. And in 3x3, that's a huge benefit. Rian Druitt tries a Kuru Fifirua of his own. No good. Hands all over that one. But somehow Rotorua regained possession. Xander Masters with the hot hand. 18 to 6 now. Dangerously close to that end point. Rian drew it. Answers with one of his own. Three points away from a dub. Arotorua boys. Xander Masters can't get that one to go. Not all sunshine and rainbows. Rian drew it. Has got something to say. Won't go down without a fight. 18 to 10. Still for Arotorua boys. And a little flare to get Xander coming downhill. Manai Hike sizes up. Can't get that one to go. Keeps the ball in bounds. Rian drew it with the hot hand. Can he get three in a row? He cannot. See one of Rian's Kuru Fifi Rua's nice little stop and pop. Three and some change to go. Obviously three points away from a dub. Arotorua boys. Who better to have the ball in the hands of than the man in the blonde? Turn around, Kuru Fifirua is no good. Tries to save it as Karis Papanui. Rolleston now live to see another position. Horns action into an on ball, a very classic 3x3 play. Rotorua just applying a lot of defensive pressure on the perimeter. Karis Papanui. The smaller of the matchup out of those ones couldn't finish. And again, just that perimeter pressure from Rotorua boys. Xander Masters, I think he was trying to dunk it. Didn't quite get that one to go. Nevertheless, inch away that 21-point mark. 19 to 10 now. They could end it here if they wanted to. Clear for Cutters Papanui. 
everything but the bucket for that one. Two minutes to go. Rosen College, obviously, if they want a chance to get the win, have to score and get a stop. I think they know that. 12-19 now. Edging away that lead just a little bit. Downhill penetration is no good. Rolston College doing a great defensive job these last few positions. But a travel call turns the ball over for Rolston College. A timely turnover. Practically putting the ball in the hands of Rotorua with a chance to end this once and for all. Manaihike directing orders at his teammates. Nice little horn set. On ball screen set for Manaya. Ball reversal. Cooper Ipo wants to call game. He cannot. Obviously, these boys don't want to call game just yet, but another timely turnover for Rolleston College just when they have a fortuitous position. They cannot capitalize on that one. Ball will again go to Rotorua boys, and once again, in that horn set, what can they chef up here? Manai Hike being casual and slick with it all game. No good on that one. The Kuru Fifirua success slowing down immensely at the end of this game. Hara called on Rolleston College. Again, Manai Hike showing his leadership. Part of the Junior Tall Black squad that went away to the Oceania Championships last year. Obviously got a lot of experience and wisdom on his side and using that to lead his team. Again, that perimeter defense. Throw to the boys just poking away at any ball. An aggressive switch, typically the coverage you see in 3x3. Forcing Rolleston out of any of their offense. They've really struggled to get any of the looks they want. But Rotorua boys is just trying to capitalize on those. Nice spin move. Rian uses his athleticism. Just off the Papa Moody there. Can Xander put it into this once and for all? Yes, he can. Xander Masters is the man to do it. See that one more time. Those luscious locks. The Kuri Fifirua to end the game there. 21 to 12 win for Rotorua boys. A hard fought battle, but a great one nonetheless. We'll take another quick break and we're back with some Wahine basketball after this. Rangiora Girls High School for St. Peter's, a very anticipated matchup. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. the place. That's a good start. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower DSI school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help and try and 
give to those people who are going through through tough times. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved with us. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo. This is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on, and so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools. It really is. Sport is about more than just the game. It's about going from teammates to best mates. It's the high fives and helping hands. It's learning when to back yourself or back your buddies. It's actually being excited to get out of bed early on a Saturday. Sport is about more than just the game. That's why Caltex is proud to help fuel school sports. Got it, everyone. No my hi my hello and welcome back to some more elite basketball. We've got Wahine basketball this time in Windy Wellington at the Ako Tangi Sports Centre. A lovely venue here in the Windy City. We've got a very highly anticipated matchup between Rangiora High School and St. Peter's Cambridge College. Rangiora, the second place. Third place, sorry, in the South Island Regional Competition and St. Peter's the Championship winners of their regional competition. So again, like I said, highly anticipated matchup. St. Peter's Cambridge, as we know, always a strong girls' school for basketball. We can head to our team lists now. We've got Rangiora High, Hadley James, Hannah Lawler, Harper McDonald, and Kyra Leatham, a small squad. Nonetheless, a talented squad, being one of the most talented high schools in Christchurch for years on end now. And for St. Peter's, Macy Costello, Regan Gallian, Eva Jeffries, and famously, Tanika Ledger Walker. But you've heard that last name once or twice. Watched St. Peter's earlier this morning, and they had a very good ball game against Epson College. Just very strong defensively and nice little parts. Obviously, Tanika Ledger Walker with her expertise and calmness as a senior but Eva Jeffries a huge firepower in that offense very skilled young lady <clears throat> Rangiora High School more of a team effort for those guys they had a few great showings at the South Island competition not one person really sticking out for them but I guess that's the best way to go in 3x3 when you can have four girls who can just score the basketball it's going to be hard to guard and we're looking forward to this one Getting underway very shortly. Shout out to our sponsors, Baileys and Caltex. And the Girls Got Game Initiative and Whakata Māori for making these live streams happen and for allowing the viewers at home to watch this wonderful basketball unfold. Ball's going to be in possession of Rangiora High School to kick things off. Hadley James and Eva Jeffries, the matchup to begin with. Eva Jeffries showing her defensive prowess straight away, almost forcing the turnover, but Hadley James comes up with it, open layup and an errant turnover for St. Peter's, uncharacteristic as we see that one more time, hands in on Eva Jeffries, can't force the jump ball unfortunately, gets them out of rotation and downhill for Hadley James uh, Rimata Ano the restart for St. Peter's there must have been a tap on it somewhere ball in the hands of Tanika Ledger Walker, it's going to fire that one away Eva Jeffries comes up with the offensive two-dupper but dribbles the ball on the out-of-bounds line, unfortunately. Early subs for Rangiora. Got to get those tapuis in. Because 3x3 is a tiring game, speaking from experience. Nice off-ball screen. And peeling out from those two. Ball goes to Kyra Leatham. Swarming defense from Eva Jeffries. I believe it comes off the knee of Kyra Leatham. So will be position of St. Peter's Cambridge. 
Macy Costello with the ball up top. Really good role player, does all those little things right. Somebody that you need in your 3x3 team to set good screens, get in that dunker spot and get offensive two uppers Didn't see that pass coming from Tanika Ledger-Walker. Neither did I. An absolute dime. Smart play there from Kyra Leatham. Ball off the foot of Macy Costello. Didn't have anywhere to go. Just the one bucket. Farangi Ora High with almost a minute have passed. Macy Costello reads that one nicely. Gets a tip on it. Can't come up with the possession. But does a very good job at anticipating that roll and blowing it up. See that one more time. Definitely something she learned in the game of netball. But transferable and will take it. Check ball here for Kyra Leatham. Cross screen. She looks for the step back. Bobby Jack doesn't release it. Knows better. Four shot there for Hadley James. Believe the shot clock was winding down. So a good defensive position here for St. Peter's. Now it's about... They had to convert offensively, get something to go. Tanika Ledger Walker, swarmed by Kyra Leatham, forces the shot. Looks at the team gray for the Hutter. That was great physical defense there from Kyra. Legal contact on that one. Kick out to Hannah Lawler for the Kudu Fifirua. No good. Can't come up with a two up, but Tamata Ono restart for St. Peter's up the top. Still searching for their first bucket. Uncharacteristic for a highly quality scoring team. Eva Jeffries utilizes her shot fake, goes downhill, glides to the cup, no good, but draws the Hutter, takes a trip to the Kudu Totoku line to get a free throw to go once and for all, hopefully, and get something on the board. Ball on the court as we have our local Wellington leagues playing on the other courts. Good to see everyone getting their daily basketball in. Puts leather through lace as Eva Jeffries won a piece now. Aiden some change to go left in this ball game. Believe, considering the scoring, we might go the distance for this one. Harper McDonald lets the Kuru Fifirua fly, and it's good. Eva Jeffries utilizes that hezzy. Can't get the bunny to go. A gutting feeling, <laughs> missing a wide open lap. I know that feeling all too well. Back to back trays, no good. But they get the offensive two up. I feel like I've said that so many times today. Huge part of these teams here today is generating those second chance opportunities for their team, especially in 3x3. With so much space to work with, second chance opportunities can be vital to your offense. Ball up the top here from Tanika Ledger Walker, barking orders at her team, spacing the floor well, just looking to go ISO downhill. And that is a smart part of 3x3 offense. Obviously, you have your horn sets, you have your on ball screens, but part of it is getting the ball in the hands of a competent scorer and just going downhill. Didn't get the bucket to go, but we'll get a Tamata on. Oh, she's not happy about that one. I thought it did come off the hands of Rangiora, but there's a reason I'm a commentator and not a ref. Ball will go with Rangiora. Unsure what the call is there, unfortunately. Tupai substitutions for St. Peter's. Nice cut there. Opens up the lane for ha Harper McDonald just to go downhill on her right hand. Eva Jeffries can't get the Kuru Fifi Rua this time around. And a 4 1 early lead for Rangiora. Back to a cut. Hadley James makes it a 5-1 lead. St. Peter's still searching for their answer. Kyra Leatham with active hands on the perimeter and steals right back. Macy Costello just takes her lunch money. Eva Jeffries finally converts, but I believe they did not clear the basketball outside that Kudufa Firua line. As we see, Macy Costello just takes her lunch. But that basket will not count, unfortunately. 5-1 is the score just under seven minutes to go. Plenty of time on the clock, plenty of basketball still to be played. Oh, we go for Harper McDonald. Kyra uses her shot fake well, gets to the rim. Tanika Ledger Walker, not in my house, not having a bar of it. 
see how school bench is signaling a shot clock violation. So ball will go the way of St. Peter's. Going to have to put some leather through lace to cut away at this lead. Tanika Ledger Walker, cash me out the bank, is open from deep. Five, three points of points. Kyra Latham looks to go one of herself. Tanika uses that stop and pop really well. A little sidestep. Midi can't get that one to go. Claps in frustration. We know that feeling a little all too well. There she is with the infamous bank. Iverson cut into an on-ball screen. I like that action there for Rangi Yoda girls. But swarming defense forces the travel. Hadley James just shuffling her pivot foot a little bit. St. Peter's could tie things up here with a kuru if you do it. Eva Jeffries takes her time. Not a lot of luck from beyond the arc for Rangi Yoda. Haven't cleared the ball, so the basket will not count. Again, have to get your feet outside the three-point line completely before you try and attack. Eva Jeffries going downhill. Macy Casello gets in her away a little bit, unfortunately. Tanika Ledger Walker, nylon on that one. Even Stevens now. So St. Peter's back-to-back -back trays from Tanika Ledger Walker. Evens this ball game up. Five and a half minutes to go. I feel like we're going to go the distance, and I'm excited about that. Something about Wahine basketball is so exciting. Tanika Ledger Walker tries to throw the dime. Eva Jeffries not in the corner. Straight out of Kua Putza, out of bounds. Tamata Ono, a reset now for Rangi Ora Harper. McDonald with full confidence. Straight out of bounds, unfortunately, on that one. St. Peter's now with a chance to take their first lead of the game. Would be a delight for them. Eva Jeffries downhill out of the space of Macy Costello. Draws the hutter. Obviously stoked with that one. Chance to take the lead again. Their first lead of the game it would be. Puts the nails in the coffin. And they take the lead. What can Rangi Ora answer with here? Jump ball. Makatou putu. And again, 3x3. The rule is it goes to reward the defense. So St. Peter's now with another possession. Hadley James, great swarming defense there. Denies Eva Jeffries any chance. Harper McDonald utilizes that shot fake well. Again, denies the handoff. Tanika Ledger Walker, active hands a little bit, too active. Commits the hutter. Let's run that back one more time. Uses the shot fake well. Denies that. It's one of those tough ones. It would have been a hard shot for Harper McDonald to make. May grinding her with an easy free throw. Just rolls around the rim. Can't get that one to go. Talika Ledger Walker taking her time, sizing it up. And Macy Costello, offensive toot up. Uh, that's one of the best parts about her game is her willingness to fight to get those boards. Generate extra positions. And those nice little putbacks when Tanika Ledger Walker isn't feeling it. Macy Costello is there to clean up. What a great cleanup crew to have on your side. Rangi Ora had a hot start with their scoring. Haven't scored in the last few minutes. Need to find another avenue. Tanika Ledger Walker hands are all over that one. And a shot clock violation once again. St. Peter's proving their defensive prowess. Forcing Rangi Ora out of any actions, neutralizing all the drives they're having. Getting their hands all over everything. Rangi Ora just struggling to find any offensive rhythm these last few minutes. Eva Jeffries gets to the rim with ease. And another bucket extends their lead. Eight to five. But a change of tide from our initial scoreline. Three and a half minutes still to go though. Hadley James, a nice little floater. Cuts away that lead just a little bit more. Tanika Ledger Walker. Bottom of net. Finding her rhythm just that little bit more. 
Nice little bucket there from Hadley James, but the answer straight back. Great thing about 3x3, such a fast game, and you have the ability to have just an immediate response like that. 10 to 6 now for St. Peter's, definitely not out of reach, but Rangiora going to have some serious adjustments to do to A, to stop the scoring and actually find some rhythm themselves. See that St. Peter's defense just so swarming, forcing them into unforced errors. And Hadley James just giving that same energy back, applying a lot of pressure on the perimeter, forcing a turnover, giving them an extra position. A successful Kurukafi Rua could cut away that lead a little bit more, just bring it down to boot up. But eight seconds on the shot clock for St. Peter's. Could extend the lead to six at most. Nice little flare screen, but Tanika Ledger Walker needs none of it. Goes downhill and a great finish. 6 11. St. Peter's. Harper McDonald just forcing a shot through traffic. That's exactly what St. Peter's want. They're just going to wall up and entice those kind of shots all day. Did come off St. Peter's though. So Rangiora have another chance. They only have three seconds though. Can she get something to go, Harper? Just off that back rim. The back tupper hurts when that happens. Eva Jeffries off the backboard. Nice little floater game. St. Peter's all over it in the passing lanes, picking off those passes. Just allowing anything easy for Rangiora. Tanika Ledger Walker, bullseye. I believe that's her third or fourth of the game when she gets hot. She's deadly. Hannah Lawler looks to do the same from the same spot. Cannot. Can Tanika Ledger Walker get another one? She can't. But once again, offensive toot up the way of Macy Costello. Timeout called here by Rangiora. A smart one, I believe. What's up, Wahiki? Just an opportunity to regain their composure a little bit. Talk about their strategy going into this last one minute and 40 seconds. Obviously, it feels a little bit out of reach. Anything is possible in 3x3. But St. Peter's pretty comfortable at the moment, not only in their swarming defense, but Tanika Ledger Walker's success from beyond the arc. And their offensive toot up is just generating multiple positions for them. And they're able to capitalize most of the time. Rangiora, though, struggling really to get any offensive rhythm. Making it difficult for them to claw away at this lead. Ball in the hands of Harper McDonald. A huge on-ball screen from Kyra Latham. Kyra's going to have to let that one go. All air on that one. And ball goes the way of St. Peter's going to have to be a huge change in this last minute and a half for Rangiora to turn things around. St. Peter's looking pretty comfortable at the moment. Tanika Ledger Walker, cash me out. Loves a bank shot today. Didn't realize it was open on a Saturday in Wellington. 16 to 6. Comfortable 10 point lead just with one minute to go. See that one more time. Loves a bank shot. And a travel call Results in yet another turnover for this Rangiora side. And I think it's safe to say St. Peter's are probably going to come away with a comfortable win. On this one, clawed their way back from a 5-1 deficit. Have gone on a huge scoring run courtesy of Tanika Ledger Walker's hot hand. Kara Latham whistled for the Hutter on the perimeter. Again, not something you see often. A hands foul on the perimeter in 3x3. Eva Jeffries looking to eat up, and she does glide to the cup. Nice little one there, extends that lead again to 11 now. 40 seconds for Rangiora to just get some points on the board. Nice little pass fake from Kyra Latham, but can't convert. How frustrating. Eva Jeffries to the cup once again. 18 to 6 now. Believe this scoreboard is definitely not reflective of the game that we've actually seen. Rangiora definitely have put up a great fight. Just unable to convert anything. For St. Peter's getting everything to go at the moment. On cue, Tanika Ledger Walker. Kuru Fifi Rua. Dangerously close. Putting those final nails in the coffin of St. Peter's. Rangiora won't go down without a fight. Miss floater there. 
We'll see the end of our ball game here today. 20 to 6, a dominant win for St. Peter's, courtesy of Tanika Ledger Walker and her bank shots, apparently. Really great basketball game, and we have more to come. We're going to take a quick break. Am I speaking too early? No, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back after this round. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. So Hoops and Parks pilot is a first and shows local councils and sports trusts that if you have some oversight over community spaces, if you build it, people are going to play and Facts Me today has been a great example of that. Yeah, look, I've been part of the, the Hoops and Schools project um, pretty much since the outset and it's proven to be a wonderful formula for bringing kids into basketball, bringing communities together. Um, so I think this is a really natural progression to get more hoops in as many places as we can throughout New Zealand, bring communities together in different parts and um, let them experience how fun basketball can be being outside and playing with their friends. I mean, today's been awesome. It's so cool having this court set up, such awesome hoops. And, you know, now for these Flaxmere residents, it's 10 minutes or less to get to their local court. And these kids can come after school, before school, hang out with their mates and get some shots up. I think it's definitely going to have a positive impact. I mean, as you can see right now, the, the turnout's been pretty good. So, uh, especially in Hawke's Bay, it's always pretty sunny out here. So I think there's going to be kids filling these courts up most days. So it's uh, definitely going to be a positive impact. Hoops like this are, are open for everyone at all times and we're just able to enhance the skill level of participants and get everyone who wants to be involved in basketball involved. Oh, this, this impact here is positive as, like very positive for especially this area. This park has been desolate for many, many years so now just by putting this hoop you know, in here it's, it's going to attract a lot of the youth here and, and it's positive to you know, encourage other councils to support this initiative. Hoops and Parks, man, it, it's, a, it's a really positive vibe especially on a day like this. I'd love to see this out in you know places like Taranaki, even Kaiti. You know, it's, it's really positive for the youth, and, and it's an opportunity for for them to find a safe haven, uh, you know, a place where they can call, you know, hang out and chill with their mates. And yeah, what about you, son? It's awesome. <laughs> um, I've had heaps of fun. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, especially when we did the activity, like the one where you could choose which side to go to, because I won that and I got the singlet. And it's just been awesome. Yeah. It's great. Um, there's a lot of people who can have a chance to actually do it because um, we haven't had these type of fancy hoops before here, and it's really great. This isn't about what we wore back in the day. We're going to go now. We're going once. We're going twice. No more offers. Scored! It's about being trusted to get a better result for our clients since 1973. The forest should never have been taken off of this steep hill country that's eroding and it makes absolute sense to a forest those hills. What we're doing here is using the exotics to help that process get established. We're looking at a managed transition process where those pines are progressively thinned as the native understory establishes. We're trying to do several things here. Soak up carbon, establish native forest, and we're trying to improve biodiversity. You're achieving an awful lot with one program of activity. Want to catch a fuel bargain with Caltex and Supergold? Scan your Caltex app, flybys or airpoints for six cents off per litre with pumped. And show your Supergold card for an extra two cents off. Ah, feels good. No my hottie my welcome back. Day one, the 3x3 secondary school nationals. What an exciting morning it's been, filled with great basketball. And we have just more to come in Windy Wellington at the Akotangi Sports Centre. I'm Maya Williamson. Hope you're not sick of my voice. 
just yet because there's two more days of this to come. Great matchup. Here we have Napier Boys High School versus St. John's College. Highly anticipated matchup. Team Liss, let's head over now. Napier Boys, Balin Kasson, Harry Keeley, Zoram Smiler, Maz Taylor, and Manawa Karina. For St. John's, we've got Bryson Hidawini, Dominic Pierce, Hunter Seville, Arama Terangi, and Connor McKay. I wonder if that's a Terangi in relation to Ruben Terangi. Unfortunately, I don't have the facts on that one. St. John's will come up with the first possession. Going to see an off ball screen. And a downhill penetration. Speedy Gonzalez. 1 0 straight away for St. John's. Maz Taylor looks to connect on that one and cannot find an answer. Going to stay the way of Napier Boys with position at the top and a full shot clock. Down screen, Zorm Smiley gets the ball in his hands. Upwards. Handoff back to Harry Keeley. Kuri Fifirua is good. A hot start for both teams. 2-1. St. John's looking to go downhill. Napier more happy to settle from beyond the arc. Harry Keeley. Low post. Loving the off-ball movement from this Napier boys team. Got to do it. In 3x3. No good from beyond the arc. Zorm Smiler with an offensive. Sorry, just with the regular two upper there. Harry Keeley looking to go to the rim. Great finish. 3-1 early lead now for Napier boys. Zoram Smilet spent some time with the Hawks. Seen a little bit of the floor with the Rapid League. And good from the corner on that Kuru Fifi Rui. Rua, sorry. 5-1 now for Napier boys. A hot start to see that baseline penetration. Great kick. Can't afford to overhelp in 3x3. Giving away those corner looks. Offensive two-dupper of the Kuru Totoku. No good on that Kuru Fifirua, but another offensive two-dupper for, for Zoram Smiler. And again, cannot connect from beyond the arc. St. John's now with a position. Left-hand lay, no good. Another offensive two-dupper. And yet another one. Let's, let's say that one was a pass. But can't capitalize on that. Can St. John's. Napier now looking to put their foot down. Just that little bit more. Errant pass though, goes out of bounds. St. John's saved, live to see another position. Very fast game so far. As is 3x3. Downhill penetration on the left hand and the Hutter whistled for Napier boys. Just under eight minutes to go. Kuru Fifi Rua on its way. No good, but again. An offensive two up. It seems to be a trend for both teams. You just don't want to box out. And the Kuru Fifirua is good off of that second chance opportunity. 3-5 now. Maybe boys still in the lead. Mass Taylor gets at the rim. Off the knee of St. John's. Ball should go in possession of Napier boys. See that once again. Athletic finish. Looking like me out there. Just kidding. I am completely unathletic. Don't be fooled. Check ball up the top. Harry Keeley. But the on-ball screen is rejected. Basket will not count. The Hutter was committed before going upwards. In 3x3, three three, there's a little bit of differ differentiation of the rule there. In 5x5, five five, you just have to be in the motion so you can be in your steps. Uh, in 3x3, three three, you have to be in the upward motion of shooting to get a kuru totoku. Nice little differentiation there. Kuru... Fifi Rua is good from the corner, and St. John's have come back. Only trailing by one now. Not if Harry Keeley has anything to say about it. Comfortable bully move. 7-5. Still about seven minutes to go. Check ball up top. A lot of off-ball movement here for St. John's. Could do Fifi Rua. Rims out. Unfortunately, Napier boys doing a really good job at spacing the floor, allowing their scorers a lot of space to go downhill or pull from beyond the arc. Nice off-ball screen. On-ball defense, though, just absolutely swarming. St. John's nowhere to go. 
forcing a shot clock violation. Tamata Ano up the top for Napier boys. Kurififirua, no good. Very fast. Oh, get that out of here, says Harry Keeley. And now a chance to capitalise. Hand in the passing lane, though, for St. John's. Disallowing that momentum. Both teams with a clear urge to score and do so fast. Nice little floater game, looking like Tony Parker. Going to see a hutter as St. John's takes the tumble. Unfortunately, it was not given numbers for St. John's, so kind of figuring it out as we go. Flare screen for a Kuru Fifi Rua. And another Kuru Fifi Rua in the corner is good over the long arms of Harry Keeley. Almost a turnover. Seven all. Five and some change to go. Zoram Smiler. Athletic little jelly to the rim. It gets a finish to go. Absolute showing of fundamentals here. Two great positions of downhill penetrations and nice finishes at the rim. These boys have been working on their fundamentals. And the hoop and the harm is good for Harry Keeley. The hut committed by St. John's. Let's see that one more time. I'm going to do this myself. Thanks, team. Gets himself to the Kuru Totoku line. But can't convert on the two-point play. Free throws, team. They are important. Kuru Fifi Rua is good once again. And St. John's have taken their first lead of the game. Maz Taylor can't get that layup to go, which means St. John's can build on this lead a little bit more if they feel like it. And lovely finish. Obviously was the bigger one of that matchup. 11-9 now for St. John's. But a tussle tassel, only one second to shoot it for Napier boys. And I'm, I'm not sure if the refs are quite, no, team great. They were always on top of it. That would be a shot clock violation for Napier boys. Didn't quite have that clock awareness. So ball will be in favor of St. John's. Speedy Gonzalez, just how he started the game. Extending their lead now at 12-9. Obviously, 3x3 is a huge game of momentum, and it can shift just so quickly at any time. Obviously, Napier boys had that early lead, but St. John's have just come back and firing on all cylinders. Kuru Fifi Rua, cash me out. I believe the score should be up to 14. If my maths is correct, it totally could be wrong. Yes, 14-9 lead now for St. John's. Napier boys wanting to contain those two-point shots. Too many of them in a row can cause dangerous. Don't want to get too far that you can't come back. High post catch, can't get it to Zoram Smiler. Maz Taylor will fire with one of his own and connect. 14-11. Offensive two up once again. The hot hand here, St. John step back. Bobby Jack, no good though. Zoram Smiler. Looking to go downhill now. Just so fast and shifty, but defended well. Should stay with Zoram there. Let's have another geese. Wow. Great initial move to go downhill. St. John's, sorry, will come up with possession of that one. Looking to see a high post catch. No, but just rips on the perimeter and gets that finish to go. St. John's now showing versatility in their game. And we'll see the Hutter committed by the St. John's side. Obviously, Napier desperate to get some points on the board. It's getting to that time in the game. They're not only going to have to get stops, but put some on the board themselves to inch away at this lead. Three and a half minutes to go. Zoran Smiler puts leather through lace. Three-point lead now for St. John's. An opportunity to extend it once more. Massive foul there from both Navy boys. Send St. John's to the Kuru Totuku line for a chance to put the team up by four. A lot of par contact on that one. Gets the friendly roll to go. 
The lead is 16 to 12. Three and some change to go. Napier Boy is going to need to put some points on the board. Lovely cut from Zoram Smiler, who can connect with that one. Going to have to do a bit more of that if they want to put the nails in the coffin. Whoa, athletic to the rim. Gets the backboard slap. And a possible injury as well. I thought he might put that one on his head. Yeah, it'd be rude not to show us this one again. Here he goes. Looking like he's going to dunk that. Gets the finish. I think he might have landed on his knee a little bit funny. But hey, you got a highlight, bro. Two and a bit to go here. St. John's dangerously close to that ending mark. Maz Taylor has been huge for Napier Boys. Obviously, you've got to allow St. John's to get out of that charge circle and clear the ball. Double on ball. So much to choose from. Kuri Fifi Rua is no good from beyond the arc. Harry Keeley looks to reject that on ball. Sorry, the handoff. For Chua just bounce into his hands. A lot of par on that one. Commits the Hara. Goes to the line. Shoot a single Kuru Tautaku. Five Hutters for St. John's. I believe once you get to seven, it's two free throws. Insinuating the bonus. Like we have on five and five. Interrupted by Cheeky Ball from the other court rolling on. Love when that happens. Off the back iron. That would have been timely to make for Napier boys. St. John's can't capitalize with an extra possession. Offensive two dupper is fired. Kua Pitsa fired out of bounds. Napier boys, yet another fortuitous possession. Nice slip off that off ball screen. Harry Keeley sees the space, but can't finish. Arguably some part, some contact on that one. Nevertheless, Kuru Fifirua, no good. Another offensive two dupper for St. John's. Been a huge trend for them today. Napier going to have to get something going. Under two minutes now to score. But St. John's are all over it. Not a comfortable lead, but a pretty good lead and position to be in at the moment. Harak committed. Smart foul. Slow down the offense. Didn't allow them to get that layup. Obviously, they don't want to give away really any points at this time in the game. Smart foul to give away. Turns the corner to St. John. Ooh, fade away, give me that. Little cheeky Rondo even, 18-14. Zoram Smiler can't connect on that one. And St. John's close to putting it away once and for all. Harry Keeley sizes up. Only two seconds now. Zoran Smiler's got to force something. Pretty tough shot for the young buck. Under one minute to go here. Navy Boy's got to come up with something pretty special to get a dub. Harry Keeley has got something to say about that. 18-15, 45 seconds. Kuru Fifirua is short. But once again, an offensive two dupper. St. John's has done a very good job to create extra possessions for themselves all game long. Could be the reason why they're on that lead. 18 to 15 now, 28 seconds. Hutter committed up to five now for Napier boys. Seven fouls should result in a couple of free throws upon any foul for St. John's. Once you get to 10, it's two free throws and possession. So I want to steer clear of that position. A lot of congestion for St. John's here. Napier boys doing a good job. It's been moved. Oh, Harry Keeley with his second block of the game. Pins that against the backboard. No mercy. But can't capitalize it with the Kuru Fifirua. And we're going to dribble this one out. Although the shot clock does not support that. So St. John's got to cook up something here. Kuru Fifirua rimmed out. And the final buzzer goes to signify 
A win for St. John's over Napier Boys, 18 to 15. A well-earned battle. And we have one more coming up after the break. Tauranga girls playing Queen Margaret. And then we have a lunch break, but don't go far because there's still great basketball to come for the rest of the day. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Kia ora everyone, welcome back. No mai, haere mai. Day one, 3x3 secondary school nationals. What an exciting morning it's been. This is the last game of the first round. We'll have a quick lunch break. I'm kind of hungry. And then we're going to come back in the afternoon. And we're going to send you into the lunch break with an absolute perler of a game here in Wellington in the Ako Tangi Sports Centre. I'm Mai Williamson. And ladies and gentlemen, we have Tauranga Girls College versus Queen's Margaret College. Two very strong sides, and I'm excited to see how these girls go. It's been a very good morning of some quality basketball, so I'm sure we're going to see just some more. For Tauranga Girls College, we have Anika Highland, Maya Kahura, Arita Kahura, Jaylee Tiki, and Riley McLenahan. For Queen Margaret College, we have Amia Williams, Millie Forbes, Nahala Tuliu, and Brooke Tongia. Like we said, have seen some great wahine basketball already today. And I've been fortunate enough to commentate a lot of it. Shout out to our sponsors, Bailey's and Caltex. And the Girls Got Game Initiative. And to fuck out to Māori for making this entire live stream possible. A lot of work goes in behind the scenes so that you guys at home can enjoy a good live stream and watch your loved ones go at it. Shout out to fuck out to Māori and a great crowd as well in the Windy City. It was a bit pumpy on my flight in this morning, unfortunately, but great to be here and an awesome community as per usual at 3x3. Great to see these young guns with an opportunity to play a tournament like this so early in the year, one of many big national tournaments we have coming up this year. I'll be at a few of them, so if you're sick of my voice already, I'm sorry, there's more to come. We get underway very shortly. And we are underway. Queen Margaret College with possession first up. 
A lot of off-ball movement. Gets the Hullet to a pull-up. She gets her offensive two-dapper off the miss in the first bucket on board. And Nika Highland, the one to watch. Kuru Fifi Rua is good. Just spent some time away with the 3x3 tall for in squad. It's a travelling reserve. Very impressive feat to have accomplished as a year 13 student. She'll be the one to watch in this 3x3 space. An aggressive switch. Neutralises that action and a shot clock violation. Queen Margaret just with a lack of clock awareness grants Taranga a position. Riley McLenahan downhill on her left hand. Kicks to her teammate Anika. Looking to go downhill. Only two seconds. She's got to put a shot up. She does. Possibly a little bit of contact but no rim or result in a shot clock violation. Nice horns action. We're going to see a lot of that throughout today and tomorrow. Nahala looking to just eat up and a great finish on her left. She seems to be the problem here early for Queen Margaret. Arita Kahuta just dribbles right into Nahala's hand. Nahala takes her lunch money from her and then gets a bucket. She's a hooper. See that one more time. I'll have that. Thank you very much. You know what I'll also have? Is a bucket. 3 2 now for Queen Margaret. Anika Highland, full confidence. Connects from beyond the arc. Cash me out, Anika Highland. 4 3 now for Tauranga Girls. Swarming on ball defense, nowhere to go for Queen's Margaret. Nahala able to get something to go, but no good. Riley McLenahan uses her jab step. One. Foot, one hand, finish. Also coined as the goofy layup. 5-3 now for Tauranga, looking pretty comfortable. Nahala seems to be the focal point of this offense, just trying to get her to go downhill. Utilizes her shot fake, but it's too late. Shot clock violation. I've seen a few of those. I feel like I've said that so many times. Obviously, only 12 seconds in 3x3 as opposed to the regular 24 these guys are used to. Anika Highland, great kick to Maya Kahuta in the corner. Hits nothing on that. Kuru Fifi Rua. A chance for Queen Margaret now to chop away at that lead just a little bit. Not a lot of penetration, but Nahala with the backdoor cut seems to save their offense. But that basket is not going to count either. Another turnover in light of a shot clock violation. Seems to be a common theme. Jayla Tiki will attack downhill. And a great kick out. She's got the hot hand. Nylon. Three threes for Anika Highland to start this game. Seven three. That's pretty hard to guard. We've got to see that one more time. Anika Highland. The 3x3 reserve for the Tall Ferns. Showing why she got to travel. Jayla Tiki with one of her own. Kuru Fifirua. It is raining in here. Nine three. Queen Margaret just with no answer. Not a lot of penetration here. No paint touches for anyone outside of Nahala, but she gets the hara and will go to the Kuru Totoku. Line for one. Yeah, outside of Nahala, just not a lot of downhill penetration. We see just that one dribble and picking it up outside the three-point line really doesn't make the defense work. Doesn't stretch the floor at all. But luckily, Nahala is a beast. Good on that Kuru Totoku. Cuts the lead now to 9-5. Riley McLenahan. A little bit of an oopsies. Ball just goes. Kua puts it out of bounds. And it's a Mata Ano for Queen Margaret here. Utilizes that on-ball screen. Gets deeper in the paint now. Much better for Queen Margaret. But a great job at walling up. Just holding a college. Tough finish. For Millie Forbes. Riley McLenahan loves that little jab step. That would definitely break my ankles. With little to no time on the clock, Riley's got to let it go. But offensive two up it granted another position. Seven seconds now. Riley goes downhill, but the Hutter committed. And a smart foul. They were going to give up a basket, most likely. So smart to stop Riley from her downhill action. Force them to reset up the top. See that again. Riley boomerang it with full speed on her favoured left hand. Maya Kahura, no good from beyond the arc. 
Fafirua, no good. Riley tries one of her own. That's no good either. Obviously, it's Anika Highland's signature shot today. Hands all over a lot of part results in a hut. Should be a kuru totoku for Riley. Oh, I stand corrected. It's going to be a check up the top. Obviously, in 3x3, you have to be in the upward motion of shooting when the foul occurs to get a free throw. No good on that one. Just banks off the backboard straight to Areta Kahara. Straight off the Papamuri for an easy one. 10 to 5 now. Early lead for Tauranga. Queen Margaret definitely staying in it, but Tauranga definitely looking the more dominant of the two. Still got just under six minutes to play. Kurufafirua bank is open. Cuts the lead to 10 to 7. Interesting change of events. Oh, lovely backdoor cut and an absolute dime to a cutting Jayla Tiki. Big offensive two upper off the glass for that one. Can't convert. Unfortunately, 11 7, five minutes to go. Edita Kahura picks up the ball with nowhere to go. Riley, absolutely fearless, glides to the cup, draws a foul of her own. See Riley here just right through traffic. Super determined on her left hand. Draws a lot of contact. Gets the hara. Gets the kuru totoku. Lead is now at 12-7. Still got five minutes to play. Nahala now back on the court. I'm actually not totally sure what the call was on that one, but it's a turnover nonetheless. Possibly a turnover or an out-of-bounds call. Riley rejects the on-ball. Gets the ball back to Anika, who's got the hot hand. Absolute dime to the corner for Riley. And Nika with a huge rebound but didn't hit the rim. So should be a shot clock violation. Thought the refs might miss that one. Shot clock violated about seven seconds ago. So unfortunately Tauranga girls will not get their position. Queen Margaret College now. They're going to have to do some serious work probably through the hands of Nahala to get a bucket on the board. Oh, it's Tauranga girls' ball. Um, sorry, I didn't actually see what happened, unfortunately. I'm quite little, so I can't see all the way over the, the bench. But nevertheless, a travel called, so Queen Margaret will get the ball back. Millie Forbes with a nice kick out. Kudu Fifirua on the way. Little tussle tassel with Anika and Nahala fighting for the ball. Queen Margaret will come up with it. 11 seconds to work with here. Cross screen, ball in the hands of Nahala. If it was in the line, it will only count as one, but it's a bucket nonetheless. Only four points for Tauranga Girls College now. Arita Kahura, strong drive at the rim. Just bodies all over her, and three seconds in the key awarded. So Queen Margaret now. Couple nice stops, and a position on their hands too. Utilizes the high on ball. Almost a turnover. Nahala, though, cleans that up. Can't get the finish to go, unfortunately. Riley looks to cook. Unfortunately, can't go all the way with that one. And Nika Highland going to have to throw one up. And a rare, uncharacter uncharacteristic miss from Anika. Grants yet another position for Queen Margaret. And a chance to, once again, chop away at this lead. Jayla tries to be all over that one, but Queen Margaret come away with it. Edging away that lead, only 12-9 now, with three and a bit to go. Anika Highland, holy moly, Yahtzee, 14-9, three and a half minutes to go now. Just trying to put those nails in the coffin with her three-point shooting, sorry, two-point shooting. Check ball up the top for Tauranga girls. Anika showing that she can do it all, gets to the rim as well. Fights for the offensive two double ball goes straight into our sponsor's signs, Bailey and Caltex. Shout out you guys once again. The horn set, one you might see in almost every 3x3 game that you watch. Lovely backdoor cut. 
Jalateki thought you might get away with that hut-up, but Machupang awards that one. Again, not in the upward motion of shooting, so will be a check ball up the top. Oh, amazing finish. Did not see that one coming. Tough scoop under finish. Anika Highland zigs and zags. The nice finish of her own rises to the rim. Ball that was not cleared by Queen Margaret College, so that will go the way of Tauranga girls. See that one more time? Yeah, you just see you have to get both your feet outside the three-point line to clear it. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Anika Highland rises to the rim. Can't get the finish, though. For some reason, her three-point shooting seems to be higher percentage than her layups at the moment. Kunu Fifirua is good for Amia Williams. Heart over height. That's what I always say. 15-12 now. Tauranga girls with an opportunity to extend that lead. Jalatiki can get the offensive two up, And good for Anika Highland on that midi. Four-point lead. Just under two minutes. It's still doable. Nahala rips and goes. Easy one point for them. Just closing in that gap a little bit. Anika Highland, holy moly. Sticks it, bullseye on all cords. 18-13 now. But a bank is open for Amia Williams. She's having herself a game, playing with all heart. Every time Tauranga girls look to pull away, Amia Williams crawls them back just that little bit. Three-point deficit still, one in a minute. One and a half minutes to go. Riley pulling out the DIY kit for that one. Lovely left-hand finish. 19-5. Ever so close to that 21-point mark. Nahala, though. Lovely spin cycle, but just can't get it to go. Hands in the passing lanes. Means that Queen Margaret have another opportunity at it. Amia Williams, what can she do? Nahala shows her athletic prowess with that offensive two up. Uh, Anika Highland could win it with this. And she does. Puts leather through lace to put the final nails in the coffin. An absolute dominant shooting display from Anika Highland with the hot hand. 21-15 win for Tauranga girls over Queen Margaret College. We're going to take a lunch break now, but we will be back in the afternoon after an hour. First up, we have Rolleston College versus Palmerston Boys High School. Make sure you come back for that and for another afternoon of great basketball here in the Windy City. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Hey Tom, it's been a while. Where have you been? Sorry, man, I've been busy. Come and see what we have been doing. It's been a few years since we were here for the launch of the very first Hoops and Schools in South Auckland. Tell me what sort of impact these hoops have had in the school. Every day the kids play outside, um, morning, afternoon, morning tea, lunch times. Um, they're always outside playing basketball. We also run a sports academy for an hour a day. Um, half the group is doing basketball and the other half is off doing another sport. So we use it all the time. <laughs> That's good that they're being used. Uh, what about after school and the weekends and things? Is it uh, somewhere where you know, the community can kind of come together and play some basketball? Yeah, so um, after school we have our after school program who use this one, um, the one behind us, quite a lot. Um, and then our gates are always open for the community to use all of the courts and um, facilities here. So awesome. yeah, they're getting used quite a lot, especially on days like this. What do you think this 
facility means to the kids to have a, a hoop like this at their school? I think it's awesome. Um, like you said, the accessibility. Sometimes um, if they're playing in like the community courts, there's the older kids or the, the adults that are kind of taking up the court. So to have it here at school, um, they're always using it. They don't feel pressured to be moving off anytime soon. And yeah, it's nice to see them using a lot of it. Um, I've seen massive numbers grow, eh? like uh, we started in the beginning of the year, we started a holiday camp and our numbers were like 20 kids and now we've got 70 kids in the last holiday camp we just had. The interest has grown heaps. Having these basketball hoops out here just helps because a lot of the kids don't get that outside of school. Yep. So um, for them to be able to come and have a space where they can just fall and especially in the holidays. And are you guys running any sort of competitions outside of school that the kids are able to get into? Whakahaere mātou, tō mātou kura i tētahi kaupapa poitūkohu ki te Wharehākina kina o Moana Nui Akiwa ki te Māngere Town Centre. Um, ki reira ka whakapakari pūkenga mātou, ka prakatuhi, uh, ka ako rātou i ngā ture. Whakahaere mātou i tētahi whakataitai ki te taha o Legacy Wildcats. Um, ki reira ka tākoro rātou me etahi atu kura o tēnei rohe o Māngere. I'm Trevor Johnson and I'm a sheep and beef farmer from the Forgotten World Highway. Some of the country we bought was quite steep and difficult. We have pushed those blocks to pine trees, a thousand hectares into forest and seven thousand hectares will stay in grazing. To me it's just the best use of land. If you've got land that is not so productive it's a marvellous way of increasing your income. And go! Just fill up at a participating Caltex, stack your pump discounts, and you can collect more savings on your next visit. Oh, there's another one. Getting quite good at this. Ah, filling and saving feels good. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Hey Tom, it's been a while. Where have you been? Sorry, man, I've been busy. Come and see what we have been doing. It's been a few years since we were here for the launch of the very first Hoops in Schools in South Auckland. Tell me what sort of impact these hoops have had in the school. Every day the kids play outside, um, morning, afternoon, morning tea, lunch times. Um, they're always outside playing basketball. We also run a sports academy for an hour a day. Um, half the group is doing basketball and the other half is off doing another sport. So we use it all the time. <laughs> That's good that they're being used. Uh, what about after school and the weekends and things? Is it uh, somewhere where you know, the community can kind of come together and play some basketball? Yeah, so um, after school we have our after school program who use this one, um, the one behind us quite a lot. Um, and then our gates are always open for the community to use all of the courts and um, facilities here. So awesome. yeah, they're getting used quite a lot, especially on days like this. What do you think this facility means to the kids to have a, a hoop like this at their school? I think it's awesome. Um, like you said, the accessibility. Sometimes um, if they're playing in like the community courts, there's the older kids or the, the adults that are kind of taking up the court. So to have it here at school, um, they're always using it. They don't feel pressured to be moving off anytime soon. And yeah, it's nice to see them using a lot of it. Um, I've seen massive numbers grow. Eh? Like uh, we started in the beginning of the year, we started a holiday camp and our numbers were like 20 kids. And now we've got 70 kids in the last holiday camp we just had. The interest has grown heaps. Having these basketball hoops out here just helps because a lot of the kids don't get that outside of school. Yep. So um, for them to be able to come and have a space where they can just fall and especially in the holidays. And are you guys running any sort of competitions outside of 
school that the kids are able to get into. Uh, whakahaere mātou, ko mātou kura i tētahi kaupapa, koe tūkohu ki te whare hākina tina o Moana Nui Akiwa, ki te Māngere Town Centre, um, ki reira ka whakapakari pūkenga mātou, ka prakatihi, a ka ako rātou i ngā ture. Whakahaere mātou i tētahi whakataitai ki te taha o Legacy Wildcats, um, ki reira ka tākoro rātou me etahi atu kura o tēnei rohe o Māngere. I'm Trevor Johnson and I'm a sheep and beef farmer from the Forgotten World Highway. Some of the country we bought was quite steep and difficult. We have pushed those blocks to pine trees, a thousand hectares in the forest and 7,000 hectares will stay in grazing. To me it's just the best use of land. If you've got land that is not so productive, it's a marvellous way of increasing your income. And go! Just fill up at a participating Caltex, stack your pump discounts, and you could collect more savings on your next visit. Oh, there's another one. Getting quite good at this. Ah, uh, filling and saving feels good. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Sorry, man, I've been busy. Come and see what we have been doing. It's been a few years since we were here for the launch of the very first Hoops in the Schools in South Auckland. Tell me what sort of impact these hoops have had in the school. Every day the kids play outside, um, morning, afternoon, morning tea, lunch times. Um, they're always outside playing basketball. We also run a sports academy. For an hour a day, um, half the group is doing basketball and the other half is off doing another sport, so we use it all the time. <laughs> it's good that they're being used. Uh, what about after school and the weekends and things? Is it uh, somewhere where you know, the community can kind of come together and play some basketball? Yep, so um, after school we have our after school program who use this one, um, the one behind us, quite a lot. Um, and then our gates are always open for the community to use all of the courts and um, facilities here. So, awesome. yeah, they're getting used quite a lot, especially on days like this. What do you think this facility means to the kids to have a, a hoop like this at their school? I think it's awesome. Um, like you said, the accessibility. Sometimes um, if they're playing in like the community courts, there's the older kids or the, the adults that are kind of taking up the court. So to have it here at school, um, they're always using it. They don't feel pressured to be moving off anytime soon. And yeah, it's nice to see them using a lot of it. Um, I've seen massive numbers grow. Eh? Like uh, we started in the beginning of the year, we started a holiday camp and our numbers were like 20 kids. And now we've got 70 kids in the last holiday camp we just had. The interest has grown heaps. Having these basketball hoops out here just helps because a lot of the kids don't get that outside of school. Yep. So um, for them to be able to come and have a space where they can just fall and especially in the holidays. And are you guys running any sort of competitions outside of school that the kids are able to get into? Whakahaere mātou, ko mātou kura i tētahi kaupapa, koe tūkohu ki te whare hākina tina o Moana Nui Akiwa, ki te Māngere Town Centre. Um, ki reira ka whakapakari pūkenga mātou, ka prakatihi, a ka ako rātou i ngā ture. Whakahaere mātou i tētahi whakataitai ki te taha o Legacy Wildcats. Um, ki reira ka tākoro rātou me etahi atu kura o tēnei rohe o Māngere. I'm Trevor Johnson and I'm a sheep and beef farmer from the Forgotten World Highway. Some of the country we bought 
was quite steep and difficult. We have pushed those blocks to pine trees, a thousand hectares into forest, and 7,000 hectares will stay in grazing. To me, it's just the best use of land. If you've got land that is not so productive, it's a marvellous way of increasing your income. And go! Just fill up at a participating Caltex, stack your pump discounts, and you can collect more savings on your next visit. Oh, there's another one. Getting quite good at this. Ah, filling and saving. Feels good. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Hey Tom, it's been a while. Where have you been? Sorry man, I've been busy. Come and see what we have been doing. It's been a few years since we were here for the launch of the very first Hoops and Schools in South Auckland. Tell me what sort of impact these hoops have had in the school. Every day the kids play outside, um, morning, afternoon, morning tea, lunch times. Um, they're always outside playing basketball. We also run a sports academy for an hour a day. Um, half the group is doing basketball and the other half is off doing another sport. So we use it all the time. <laughs> That's good that they're being used. Uh, what about after school and the weekends and things? Is it uh, somewhere where you know, the community can kind of come together and play some basketball? Yeah, so um, after school we have our after school program who use this one, um, the one behind us quite a lot. Um, and then our gates are always open for the community to use all of the courts and um, facilities here. So awesome. yeah, they're getting used quite a lot, especially on days like this. What do you think this facility means to the kids to have a hoop like this at their school? I think it's awesome. Um, like you said, the accessibility. Sometimes um, if they're playing in like the community courts, there's the older kids or the, the adults that are kind of taking up the court. So to have it here at school, um, they're always using it. They don't feel pressured to be moving off anytime soon. And yeah, it's nice to see them using a lot of it. Um, I've seen massive numbers grow. Eh? Like uh, we started in the beginning of the year, we started a holiday camp and our numbers were like 20 kids. And now we've got 70 kids in the last holiday camp we just had. The interest has grown heaps. Having these basketball hoops out here just helps because a lot of the kids don't get that outside of school. Yep. So um, for them to be able to come and have a space where they can just fall and especially in the holidays. And are you guys running any sort of competitions outside of school that the kids are able to get into? Whakahaere mātou, tō mātou kura i tētahi kaupapa, koe tūkohu ki te Wharehākina kina o Moana Nui Akiwa, ki te Māngere Town Centre. Um, ki reira ka whakapakari pūkenga mātou, ka prakatuhi, uh, ka ako rātou i ngā ture. Whakahaere mātou i tētahi whakataitai ki te taha o Legacy Wildcats. Um, ki reira ka tākoro rātou me etahi atu kura o tēnei rohe o Māngere. I'm Trevor Johnson and I'm a sheep and beef farmer from the Forgotten World Highway. Some of the country we bought was quite steep and difficult. We have pushed those blocks to pine trees, a thousand hectares into forest and 7,000 hectares will stay in grazing. To me it's just the best use of land. If you've got land that is not so productive, it's a marvellous way of increasing your income. And go! Just fill up at a participating Caltex, stack your pump discounts, and you can collect more savings on your next visit. Oh, there's another one. Getting quite good at this. Ah, filling and saving. Feels good. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube.
Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all, but we can help you and try and give to those people who are going through, through tough times. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved in this. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo. This is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on. And so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools. It really is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. We're going to go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't. I just want to welcome everyone here today, all you beautiful women, all you people. These hoops are pretty mean, eh? Global warming is incredibly serious. We need to cut emissions, but we need to also absorb carbon out of the atmosphere. Growing trees is the only tool we have in the toolbox for taking carbon out of the atmosphere that we can do at scale. Pinus radiata takes carbon out of the atmosphere at about five to 10 times the rate of native planting. And so what New Zealand carbon farming are doing is planting the Pinus radiata to absorb the carbon, and then they're transitioning that forest into native forests so that we get the biodiversity benefit. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help you and try and give to those people who are going through, through tough times. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved in this. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo. This is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on. And so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools. It really is. OK. Mm -hmm. Yes. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. We're gonna go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't.
just want to welcome everyone here today, all you beautiful Wanganui people. These hoops are pretty mean, eh? Global warming is incredibly serious. We need to cut emissions, but we need to also absorb carbon out of the atmosphere. Growing trees is the only tool we have in the toolbox for taking carbon out of the atmosphere that we can do at scale. Pinus radiata takes carbon out of the atmosphere at about five to 10 times the rate of native planting. And so what New Zealand carbon farming are doing is planting the Pinus radiata to absorb the carbon, and then they're transitioning that forest into native forests so that we get the biodiversity benefit. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through a really tough time. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved with it. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo, this is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on, and so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools, it really is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. We're gonna go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't. We just wanna welcome everyone here today, all you beautiful woman and people.
Global warming is incredibly serious. We need to cut emissions, but we need to also absorb carbon out of the atmosphere. Growing trees is the only tool we have in the toolbox for taking carbon out of the atmosphere that we can do at scale. Pinus radiata takes carbon out of the atmosphere at about five to 10 times the rate of native planting. And so what New Zealand Carbon Farming are doing is planting the Pinus radiata to absorb the carbon, and then they're transitioning that forest into native forests so that we get the biodiversity benefit. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help you and try and give to those people who are going through a really tough time. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved with it. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo, this is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on, and so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools, it really is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. We're gonna go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't. I just wanna welcome everyone here today, all you beautiful woman, all you people. Global warming is incredibly serious. We need to cut emissions, but we need to also absorb carbon out of the atmosphere. Growing trees is the only tool we have in the toolbox for taking carbon out of the atmosphere that we can do at scale. Pinus radiata takes carbon out of the atmosphere at about five to 10 times the rate of native planting. And so what New Zealand Carbon Farming are doing is planting the Pinus radiata to absorb the carbon, and then they're transitioning that forest into native forests so that we get the biodiversity benefit. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube.
Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all, but we can help you and try and give to those people who are going through a really tough time. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved with it. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo, this is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on, and so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools, it really is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. We're gonna go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't. We just wanna welcome everyone here today, all you beautiful woman, all you people. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. This isn't an ad about four-wheel drives. It's about knowing the place, as well as the locals. You found the place. That's a good start. Just by my great grandfather. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help you and try and give to those people who are going through a really tough time. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved with it. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo, this is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on, and so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools, it really is.
Because sport is about more than just the game. It's about going from teammates to best mates. It's the high fives and helping hands. It's learning when to back yourself or back your buddies. It's actually being excited to get out of bed early on a Saturday. Sport is about more than just the game. That's why Caltex is proud to help fuel school sports. Global warming is incredibly serious. We need to cut emissions, but we need to also absorb carbon out of the atmosphere. Growing trees is the only tool we have in the toolbox for taking carbon out of the atmosphere that we can do at scale. Pinus radiata takes carbon out of the atmosphere at about five to 10 times the rate of native planting. And so what New Zealand carbon farming are doing is planting the Pinus radiata to absorb the carbon, and then they're transitioning that forest into native forests so that we get the biodiversity benefit. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through a really tough time. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved with it. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo, this is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on, and so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools, it really is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. We're gonna go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't. We just want to welcome everyone here today, all you beautiful woman, all you people. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. So Hoops and Parks pilot is a first and shows local councils and sports trusts that if you have some oversight over community spaces, if you build it, people are going to play and Flex Me today has been a great example of that. 
Yeah, look, I've been part of the, the Hoops in Schools project um, pretty much since the outset and it's proven to be a, a wonderful formula for bringing kids into basketball, bringing communities together. Um, so I think this is a really natural progression to get more hoops in as many places as we can throughout New Zealand, bring communities together in different parts and um, let them experience how fun basketball can be being outside and playing with their friends. I mean, today's been awesome. It's so cool having this court set up, such awesome hoops. And, you know, now for these Flaxmere residents, it's 10 minutes or less to get to their local court. And these kids can come after school, before school, hang out with their mates and get some shots up. I think it's definitely going to have a positive impact. I mean, as you can see right now, the, the turnout's been pretty good. So, uh, especially in Hawke's Bay, it's always pretty sunny out here. So I think there's going to be kids filling these courts up most days. So it's uh, definitely going to be a positive impact. Hoops like this are, are open for everyone at all times and we're just able to enhance the skill level of participants and get everyone who wants to be involved in basketball involved. Oh, this, this impact here is positive as, like very positive for, especially this area, this park has been desolate for many, many years so now just by putting this hoop, you know, in here it's, it's going to attract a lot of the youth here and, and it's positive, we, you know, encourage other councils to support this initiative, Hoops and Parks, man, it, it's, a, it's a really positive vibe, especially on a day like this, I'd love to to see this out in you know places like Taranaki, even Kaiti, you know it's it's really positive for the youth and and it's an opportunity for for them to find a safe haven, uh, you know a place where they can call, you know hang out and chill with their mates and yeah. What about you, son? It's awesome. <laughs> um, I've had heaps of fun. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, especially when we did the activity, like the one where you could choose which side to go to, because I won that and I got the singlet. And it's just been awesome, yeah. It's great, um, there's a lot of people who can have a chance to actually do it, um, cause we haven't had these type of fancy hoops before here, and it's really great. This isn't about what we wore back in the day. We're going to go now. We're going once, we're going twice. No more offers. Sold! It's about being trusted to get a better result for our clients since 1973. The forest should never have been taken off this steep hill country that's eroding, and it makes absolute sense to a forest those hills. What we're doing here is using the exotics to help that process get established. We're looking at a managed transition process where those pines are progressively thinned as the native understory establishes. We're trying to do several things here. Soak up carbon, establish native forest, and we're trying to improve biodiversity. You're achieving an awful lot with one program of activity. Want to catch a fuel bargain with Caltex and Supergold? Scan your Caltex app, flybys or airpoints for six cents off per litre with Pumped. And show your Supergold card for an extra two cents off. Ah, feels good. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. So Hoops and Parks pilot is a first and shows local councils and sports trusts that if you have some oversight over community spaces, if you build it, people are going to play and Flaxmere today has been a great example of that. Yeah, look, I've been part of the, the Hoops and Schools project um, pretty much since the outset and it's proven to be a, a wonderful formula for bringing kids into basketball, bringing communities together. Um, so I think this is a really natural progression to get more hoops in as many places as we can throughout New Zealand, bring communities together in different parts and um, let them experience how fun basketball can be being outside and playing with their friends.
I mean, today's been awesome. It's so cool having this court set up, such awesome hoops. And, you know, now for these Flaxmere residents, it's 10 minutes or less to get to their local court. And these kids can come after school, before school, hang out with their mates and get some shots up. I think it's definitely going to have a positive impact. I mean, as you can see right now, the, the turnout's been pretty good. So, uh, especially in Hawke's Bay, it's always pretty sunny out here. So I think there's going to be kids filling these courts up most days. So it's uh, definitely going to be a positive impact. Hoops like this are, are open for everyone at all times and we're just able to enhance the skill level of participants and get everyone who wants to be involved in basketball involved. Oh, this, this impact here is positive as, like very positive for, especially this area, this park has been desolate for many, many years so now just by putting this hoop, you know, in here it's, it's going to attract a lot of the youth here and, and it's positive, we, you know, encourage other councils to support this initiative, Hoops and Parks, man, it, it's, a, it's a really positive vibe, especially on a day like this, I'd love to to see this out in you know places like Taranaki, even Kaiti, you know it's it's really positive for the youth and and it's an opportunity for for them to find a safe haven, uh, you know a place where they can call, you know hang out and chill with their mates and yeah. What about you, son? It's awesome. <laughs> um, I've had heaps of fun. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, especially when we did the activity, like the one where you could choose which side to go to, because I won that and I got the singlet. And it's just been awesome, yeah. It's great, um, there's a lot of people who can have a chance to actually do it, um, cause we haven't had these type of fancy hoops before here, and it's really great. This isn't about what we wore back in the day. We're going to go now. We're going once. We're going twice. No more offers. Scored! It's about being trusted to get a better result for our clients since 1973. The forest should never have been taken off this steep hill country that's eroding and it makes absolute sense to a forest those hills. What we're doing here is using the exotics to help that process get established. We're looking at a managed transition process where those pines are progressively thinned as the native understory establishes. We're trying to do several things here. Soak up carbon, establish native forest, and we're trying to improve biodiversity. You're achieving an awful lot with one program of activity. Want to catch a fuel bargain with Caltex and Supergold? Scan your Caltex app, flybys or airpoints for six cents off per litre with Pumped. And show your Supergold card for an extra two cents off. Ah, feels good.
Tani Mai. Welcome back to the afternoon session of the Basketball New Zealand Secondary School Nationals 3x3 tournament here in the Windy City of Wellington. I'm Mai Williamson and I'm joined by the one and the only Double D Ryan Double Dam. How are you, Ryan? I'm good, thank you, Mai. How are you? How was your morning session? Oh, it was incredible. How was yours? Uh, look, mixed results for my boys, the Palmer's North Boys High School team. Um, Went down in a tough encounter versus Aquinas 17 12 before shooting the lights out against uh, St. Thomas and taking the win 21 12. That's quite a good win to get for you guys. St. Thomas obviously won the South Island competition. You guys are playing Rolleston College here today. Any, any foresight into your scout for today? Uh, look, we're going to try and take away their right hands and uh, make, make some left handed layups. Um, apparently, they can shoot a bit if. if uh, left open and we all know two's worth more than one so if we can trade twos for ones uh, I'll be happy. That's nice and intellectual of you. Uh, Rolston College teamless Ryan Druitt, Max Malloy, Alatua, Tia Tia, Real Wheaton and Shuto Suzuki. What a last name. Should be getting underway sometime soon. What have you guys been doing well today Ryan? What can we expect to see from your boys? Well we want to live behind the, the two point line here at 3x3 and um Sometimes they go in and sometimes they don't. We shot poorly against Aquinas and shot really well against uh, St. Thomas. So hopefully we can uh, average that out and just have a, have a decent shooting performance uh, here. But uh, for 3x3 for us, uh, our, we kind of find our mojo in, uh, at the regionals by playing up and in defense. So hopefully, as uh, one of our boys doesn't have their mouth going in and subbed <laughs> out already, uh, we can it's play some start. good defense. It's a good start for Palmy boys here. Nice you action. You've taught them. No good on the yep. Kuru. Everyone just seems to go under that action. We usually get twos. There's some good defense, but better offense by the Rolleston boys. No, you can't be too biased. All right, Ryan. You've got to reel it in a little bit. Goes downhill. Great wall up defense, but a tough finish. Tough finish, yep. Let's see what you've been teaching them. Well, I mean, contested ones is not really what I'd like, but. Got to take where you can get it, right? Unfortunately, at this uh, at three x three, you know, not, not allowed to coach. So, all the coaching's done in practice and before the game. Been a tough experience for you, has it? Yeah. Well, uh, it wasn't policed particularly well at regionals, but here it's uh, a bit more strict. So I got to make sure I'm not uh, causing any technical fouls or anything like that yeah. uh, for the Palmy Boys team. As we got one and a half seconds on the clock. We're interested to see if anyone's communicated that. And by the looks of who's checking it, it doesn't. <laughs> and we turn it over and give it to the wrong team. Not exactly what you want, no. Ryan. But that's all right. Downhill again for Rolleston College. Can't get that one to go. See if Palmy boys can oh. impress Ryan. Double dam. Nope. Travel. A turnover. Slow start. Slow this, start. It's a, it's a thing about 3x3. Uh, you know, the perfect probably amount of time between games is like 40 to 50 minutes. Mm. Too long of a break and... Just takes a little while to get your rhythm. Yep. I had a long lunch break as Ryan drew it. Drills the Kuru Fifi Rua. An early lead for Rolly Colley here. Rolly Colley? Is that the, is that the nickname? That's the this, nickname, uh, yeah. Establishment That's a little South Island. South Island insight. Any nickname for just Palmy Boys? Palmy Boys. PB oh. sometimes, depending on PB. who you talk to. If you're feeling crazy. Here we go. It's the same play. Just get in this time. Nope. Like you said, it helps when you make your twos. Yep. They're better than ones. Good what a defense. Downhill penetration. Favoured here for Allison College. Look with that. Step back. Bobby Jack, as you like to coin it, Ryan. Hands in the passing lane. Can't get the turnover. Bit, bit stagnant in the transit for offense. We just expect wide open kickouts to be nice to move into the space and get some cleaner looks. Are you wishing you could be yelling this to them right now a little bit? I do. I do. It's a lot of self. Uh, restraint as we get another two off a set play and then it still doesn't go in. <laughs> it's coming, don't worry. It's coming. As long as we don't leave it too late. And only one point on the board for you guys, so. No, yeah. Just just um, under eight minutes though, you've got plenty of time. Like it's all a bit of a chess match, right? Top four to get out of your pool and get to the quarterfinals tomorrow. Yep. So we picked up a really good win this morning. It'll be nice to, if we could somehow manage to get this one. Because we force another miss, but can't rebound. And another one and can't rebound. <laughs> Ryan's super happy right now. 
Rolleston College Thrive up offensive two up is there you go, Ryan. Chipping away at that lead a little bit more. Our, our balance between ones and twos is fine, except for... Oh, you got lucky on that one. Yep. Got away with one there. Offensive two up is just mounting for Rolleston College. To be fair, our uh, rebounding was an issue in the first two games, so it is really no surprise that we're struggling at the moment. What do you, you put that down to? Is that a size issue or is that a... A bit of both. Bit like, of if both. we're physical, it shouldn't be an issue. Totally agree. Rolleston College now 7-2 to two with that Kuru Pepirua. Palmy boys struggling to get anything on the board. And that trend continues. Yeah. Sorry, Ryan. Look, if we can just play defense which we're not doing right now. <laughs> he actually just did the polar opposite. Uh, we'll give ourselves a chance. So, still plenty of time left, but we have not found any sort of uh, rhythm. And they are aware they're allowed to call a timeout. So it'll be interesting to see if they uh, use one at any point soon. The hope and the harm for Rolleston College extending their lead. Once again, all the momentum in their favour, but basketball, we know, is like a game of chess. Could if you do it? Another one, no good. Shot clock, reset. Seven seconds to work with. Tough move. Hudson Aish, the lefty gets left. Now we just gotta get some stops. Gotta get some two duppers as well. Rolleston College face off getting offensive two duppers and generating second chance opportunities. Here we go, surely that's it. Hates a two-point shot early. <laughs> this obviously had too much of a lunch break or something as we see Hudson Aish get on his left hand. I, I'm, I'm fine with the look. It's yeah. Just got to go in. Just got to go in. You just got to keep shooting until you get hot. All right. Put yeah. reps up, man. Put travel. reps up. Good defense. Dead ball. Got a rebound now. Big rebound. Well defended. You'll keep position. We've got seven seconds. What are you wanting them to run right now, Ryan? Oh, they'll run the same play that they've run the last three times because, oh no, we're into the third option of it. Oh, that's a good luck, isn't it? Oh, got to shoot it. Got to shoot it. You're going to see a shot clock violation. I would love if we uh, called a timeout just to kind of discuss things. We've got some not some not great communication going on, but. No such thing will be called, unfortunately, Ryan. Rolson still comfortably sitting in that 9-3 to three lead. Ryan drew it. Zigzags his way to the rim, gets the hutter, and will shoot a kuru totoku. Said that once more time. How do you feel about that, Ryan? Uh, we haven't found a lot, so if we're going to give up a layup, we might as well make him earn it. we just got to make sure we rebound like that, which we're not. The offensive two up is a big part of Rolleston College's game. Ryan, you can't say that. I think we had a game delay warning, so. Our defense inside the charge circle, I believe. So reset, shot clock, check up. Samata Ano, a restart for Palmerston boys. A little bit overzealous on the defense there. Desperately needing a bucket here to keep the game within reach. Slow down Rollison's momentum. Here and just go. on cue, Hudson. Now we just need to get some stops. Momentum could be shifting. Got a rebound. What's going on here? Not too sure what the referee is signaling, unfortunately. We have a Tamata Ano, a restart up the top. Tapui in. It's not a bad little look, is it? Oh, and it's gone out of bounds. I shouldn't have said that. Right idea, bad execution. Maintain composure, Ryan. You've still got five minutes. Rolleston College out of there. Horn set. Sets the away screen. Not much. From that, Palmy Boys doing a good job to neutralise their actions. Shake and bake and one hoop in the harm. Tough, tough finish. Tough finish. A lot of par on that one. A lot of contact. Gets the hutter. See that one more time. Puts him in a spin cycle. 11-5 now. Chance to make it 12-5. 
the stuff. Got four and a half minutes left to play. A lot of contact on that. No whistle. I believe it will stay the way of Palmy boys. Looking a bit tentative at the moment, and we're slowly running out of time as well. Got to get some buckets, buckets going, don't you? Yeah, well, we're just not. We're not really even taking care of the ball. Like we've one quality look in the last probably two and a half minutes. What would you prefer to them to run right now? Not that. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> Fade away three contested. That's not what you want. What's going wrong here defensively for you guys? Um, well, we want them to drive, but we're giving them a clean look. So mm. it's kind of got to be a happy medium. You take away the twos, but can't give them direct lines and then bail them out at the same time. 100%. Palmy boys now up to four hutters. And then we just have one committed by Rollison College on hit, the clearance. Hit the Korofifi Rua after the whistle as well. Surely that's a foresight for what's well. about to come. One can only hope. Great on-ball oh. defence. And what was the call? I was, didn't quite was, see it. It was a marginal carry. All a right. Marginal carry. Ryan's sometimes making his you, feelings clear. Sometimes you just got to let them play, you know? No, I, yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. But, there's, you know, there's a reason that Team Grey are there to do their job. Corner, Kurupapirua. Long, Rollison College looking to eat up now. Great wall-up defense, but just good, one extra profit. Yeah, nice patience off two feet. Good kick out. This one's got to go. Steps out of bounds. So the last result that Ryan wants to take another look at that patient footwork. Got to leave the ground second as a defense. And good. finally, timeout. What do you think they're going to be talking about right now, Ryan? Oh, probably a bit of everything, right? Yep. Our spacing's bad, our ball control's bad, our defense is bad. It rebounded a little bit better in the last 90 seconds. Um, hopefully they're talking about, yeah, we've got to keep shooting twos because three minutes, 25 to go uh, and down eight. Not, um, not totally favorable, is it? No, not at all. Um, and kind of following the progression of the day, Shoot bad one game, shoot good. We're back to shooting bad. So, so maybe next it, game. Maybe it bodes well for this afternoon against yeah. a very tough Rotorua game. Oh, a maybe team? you're just going to shoot lights out well, in the afternoon. Touch wood. We'll see. See what defensive position we can come up with here. Does well to stay in front. Fade away jumper is good. Tough That's tough. Could have 50 Rua. Unsuccessful once again for Palmy boys. Rolleston College have looked pretty comfortable this entire duration of the game. Great pass. Loving the patience. Good extra pass. That was some good offense there. And we get there rewarded. You there go. we go. Only took seven minutes. 14-7 <laughs> should be the score. Just two. Under three minutes to play. It's not totally over. It's not totally over. It's not over. No, no. Couple of couple of twos and some turnovers, and you're right back in it. But have to be efficient as we're getting a lecture about not playing defense, which was marginal in the in the charge circle. And we late communication on the switch. Good contest of that pull up, Jay. There, but can't get the two up. Uh, Rollison generate an extra position for themselves once again with an offensive two up. Uh, contained well here by Palmy Boys. But Kuru Fifi Rua. They're pulling away 16 to 7. Pony boys don't want to go down without a fight. 16 9. Two minutes to go. Great contest. And no call from the ref. A little bit unbalanced there on the Kuru Fifi uh, Rua. Ticking under, about to tick under two minutes left here in the game. Jab step. Two. Rebound, Palmy boys. Like you said, efficiency and execution, huge now. Bank. Great offensive toot up uh, for Chuitas. 16-10, you know it's not over. You've got to get a few stops. And again, be efficient on the offensive Ooh. end. Called a foul. The baseline ref called it out. Lead ref called a foul. So I think it stays Rolleston with a fresh shot clock. 
Up to five. Hutters now two more, and it's the bonus for Rolleston College, a position you would most likely want to avoid. Good defense here. Almost a shot clock violation, and we get one. Brilliant defensive position. Small periods have played really <laughs> well, but we're running, <laughs> running out of time. You've got to take the small victories, Double D. Same play. They go over the screen this time. Not a lot generated from that. Four seconds to work with now. Got to pull something. And, one. and nothing, unfortunately. Yeah, we need to probably attack off that initial handoff a little bit too uh, lackadaisical when then we give up a lap, and they delay again. Rollison College looking all too comfortable. Could if you do it is good, but is it too late? 17-12. Smokes the layup. Huge rebound. Another Kofi Fedua on its way. No good. And it's looking like it's going to be we maybe were... too late. Am I speaking too early? Let's see if it would have been great at the uh, beginning of the game. Step back. Bobby Jack. Not quite. <laughs> A tear rolls down Ryan's face. Hara committed once again. Up to six now for Palmy Boys. One away from that bonus. Two free. Th oh. I'm kidding. Rollison College fouled. Yeah. Never mind. Another chance. They look to see another possession. What can Harmony Boys cook up? Nice hand in the passing lane. Still six seconds to shoot. We need a, probably a quick, quick Kura Fifi Rua into some turnovers to get, have any kind of shot here. I would like to see uh, whoever checks it to shoot it would be a great idea. Is that going to happen? That, they know they can do it. But we just throw it to the wrong team. <laughs> Not quite what you had in mind yeah. for that position there, Ryan. And easy bucket for Rollerson College putting their final nails yeah. in this one. Look, Eight. they have uh, by far played the better basketball for the majority of the game and are deserved of winners as the last 15 seconds what's plays in, out. What's in store for Pine Boys after this? A couple of choice words from oh, you, look, Ryan? They're going to get a lecture about rebounding and yep. effort. And then we will try and regroup and see if we can give Rotorua a run for their money. When, when is that game being played? Do we know, Ryan? Uh, 250. 250. Plenty of time to get some rest going. Could if you do it, a hopeful attempt. As the last seconds will wind down. Rolleston College will officially get the win over Palmerston North Boys High. 18 to 12. A well fought effort, Ryan. Yeah, all credit to Rolleston. They, they deserve to win. They, they made us make mistakes. They played. Played fast. We couldn't shoot when we had our chances, and rebounding killed us. So Unfortunately. All credit to Rolleston. As um, Paul A will have a few teams beating each other, which could make it interesting for seeding tomorrow. Well, that's great. That's all we want, right? That's what tournaments are for. It's what makes them exciting. What makes it exciting for the viewers and not for the coaches. Oh, poor Ryan. You'll be okay. Unfortunately, Ryan has to depart us and give a lecture to his team. Um, if I'm not annoying you too much, stick around. We've got another game coming up. After the break. Want to catch a fuel bargain with Caltex and Supergold? Scan your Caltex app, flybys or airpoints for six cents off per litre with Pumped. You beauty! And show your Supergold card for an extra two cents off. Ah, feels good. Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. So Hoops and Parks Pilot is a first and shows local councils and sports trusts that if you have some oversight over community spaces, if you build it, people are going to play. And Flex Me today has been a great example of that. Yeah, look, I've been part of the, the Hoops and Schools project um, pretty much since the outset and it's proven to be a wonderful formula for bringing kids into basketball, bringing communities together. Um, so I think this is a really natural progression to get more hoops in as many places as we can throughout New Zealand, bring communities together in different parts and um, let them experience how fun basketball can be being outside and playing with their friends. I mean, today's been awesome. It's so cool. 
having this court set up, such awesome hoops. And, you know, now for these Flaxmere residents, it's 10 minutes or less to get to their local court. And these kids can come after school, before school, hang out with their mates and get some shots up. I think it's definitely going to have a positive impact. I mean, as you can see right now, the, the turnout's been pretty good. So, uh, especially in Hawke's Bay, it's always pretty sunny out here. So I think there's going to be kids filling these courts up most days. So it's uh, definitely going to be a positive impact. Hoops like this are, are open for everyone at all times and we're just able to enhance the skill level of participants and get everyone who wants to be involved in basketball involved. Oh, this, this impact here is positive as, like very positive for especially this area. This park has been desolate for many, many years so now just by putting this hoop you know, in here it's, it's going to attract a lot of the youth here and, and it's positive to you know, encourage other councils to support this initiative. Hoops and Parks, man, it, it's, a, it's a really positive vibe especially on a day like this. I'd love to see this out in you know places like Taranaki, even Kaiti. You know, it's, it's really positive for the youth, and, and it's an opportunity for for them to find a safe haven. Uh, you know, a place where they can call, you know, hang out and chill with their mates. And yeah, what about you, son? It's awesome. <laughs> um, I've had heaps of fun. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, especially when we did the activity, like the one where you could choose which side to go to, because I won that and I got the singlet. And it's just been awesome. Yeah. It's great. Um, there's a lot of people who can have a chance to actually do it because um, we haven't had these type of fancy hoops before here and it's really great. This isn't about what we wore back in the day. We're going to go now. We're going once. We're going twice. No more offers. Scored! It's about being trusted to get a better result for our clients since 1973. The forest should never have been taken off this steep hill country that's eroding, and it makes absolute sense to a forest those hills. What we're doing here is using the exotics to help that process get established. We're looking at a managed transition process where those pines are progressively thinned as the native understory establishes. We're trying to do several things here. Soak up carbon, establish native forest, and we're trying to improve biodiversity. You're achieving an awful lot with one program of activity. Want to catch a fuel bargain with Caltex and Supergold? Scan your Caltex at flybys or airpoints for six cents off per litre with pumped. And show your Supergold card for an extra two cents off. Ah, feels good. No my hi my. Welcome back to some more exciting basketball here at the 3x3 Nationals Secondary Schools run by the brilliant Basketball New Zealand here in the Windy City at the Akotangi Sports Centre. Rangi Ora College versus Epsom Girls College. Epsom Grammar, sorry. I'm Maya Williamson and I am by myself. Unfortunately I had Coach Ryan Double Dam previously with me but we are back to just being solo which is okay. I'll be able to survive. For Epsom Grammar, we have Savannah Fete, Drawn Forbes, Kiara Tiamo, and Kyra Midson. For Rangiora High, we have Hadley James, Hannah Lawler, Harper McDonald, and Kyra Leatham. Rangiora searching for their first win of the day. Sorry, I think I've read out the wrong team. I think we have Wellington East instead. That, my apologies. Vera Schmidt, Portia McLean, Ava Yee, Rosalia Vanua Suit. And Asher Young, my apologies, the uniforms look very similar. I know that Rangiora are still searching for their first win of the day. And Wellington East, I know they had a close uh, loss against St. Andrews College early this morning. So they'll be desperate for another win themselves. Looking forward to a good ball game. And it will be underway very shortly. Ball will be in the favour of Rangiora College. Looks like we are... Good to go. Shout out to our loyal fans who come down here to watch this great basketball unfold in the Windy City. And shout out to our wonderful sponsors that make this happen, Bailey's and Caltex and Fakata Māori for all your work on the live stream. Rangiora start off with a great curl cut. Kyra Leatham with an easy one, starting the game off strong for Rangiora. 
coach Holly Parrish has worked with them quite a lot, so I'll be very happy with that outcome. Full shot from Wellington East. Ball hands up. Ball ends up with Rangiora once again. Tissle Tassel. Bodies on the floor. Wellington East come up with possession. Kuru Fifi Rua is good. Straight off the bat for Wellington East. And an errant turnover. Wellington East will get possession straight back. We see just straight through the bottom of the net on that Kuru Fifi Rua. Temata Ano for Wellington. They get to restart as well. A chance to get another quick bucket. Another Kuru Fifi Rua would be nice for them. Overload action on one side. The pin down screen and the curl. Oh, that is just brilliant basketball. Can't get the result, but a great look and a very good execution of that extra pass off the curl. Looks like it came off Rangiora, so will be Wellington College ball. Bodies on the floor, and we're going to see a block. I'd love to see that one more time. Kyra Lethem. WWE-esque with the amount of contact on that one. Will be Ball of Wellington College. Down screen. Referees unhappy with how that check ball went ahead. Same action with the down screen. However, Wellington East just chose to go downhill this time. Harper McDonald just gets her hand in there. Commits the hutter. See that again. The great thing about 3x3, obviously you only have three players, so you're widening the court a lot. Those off-ball actions are being utilized well, but there is opportunity for a good scorer to just rip and go downhill. And Jula Hutter, just as we've seen, Kudu Totoku is no good. Just a little 2-1 lead early here. Aiden some change to go. Ball goes out of bounds. Love to see both teams hustling for the ball. Not a lot of offensive rhythm early here for either side. We just had a big lunch break, so obviously momentum takes a little bit to get into. Once again, issues with the check ball. Typically not the hardest part of 3x3. Great drive and kick. Wellington doing a really nice job getting two feet in the paint, drawing defenders and then kicking out. Ball ends with Rangiora, wide open, Harper McDonald. Cash, me, out, Kuru Fifi Rua. Puts them in front by one. Eight minutes left to go in this ball game. Wellington cannot answer with a Kuru Fifi Rua of their own. Don't believe Rangiora have cleared the ball. Right intention with that backdoor cut. But you have to get it outside the Kuru Fifi Rua line. Have another look at Harper McDonald's three. Five seconds to work with here for Rangi Ora. Enough time to run an action. Rejects the on ball. Hadley James going to let one go. No good off the back iron. Ball goes Kua puts up. And we'll have a Ramata Ano up top for Wellington East. And once again, they evade the check ball. Chooses to go downhill. Oh, flashy footwork to the rim. Pulled out the DIY kit for that one. Love the patience off of two feet. Gets her in the air. Harper McDonald looks to go back to back. Tied at three apiece with seven and a half minutes to go. Lovely pass to a rolling big. Kyra Leatham hands all in that one. Physicality is allowed by Team Great. Kyra Leatham sees space, pulls it, no good. Lovely pistol action there, handoff into an on ball, no good, but results in an offensive two tapa. However, no tapa on that one, just off the Papa Muri, so it will be Rangiora position. Check ball up the top. See what action they run. Little flare screen. Ball goes to Harper McDonald. Utilizes her shot fake well. Would love to see her play off too. When getting in the Rohikuru, which is the paint. Turns the corner. Lovely left-hand scoop layup. 
Wellington East now up one, six and a half minutes still to go, plenty of time. A lot of physicality on that one. We have a jump ball situation, Maka toe Patu. Ball always goes to the defence in these kind of situations. I really like that 3x3 rule, that the ball goes to the defence. I think it rewards um, playing clean but aggressive defence. Kyra Leatham, hands all over it, steals the lunch money. And once again, lunch money taken back. Lot of physicality here early. Bodies are going on the floor. That's what you love to see. Seven seconds here. Point Denise, we'll see that again. Kyra Leatham, the hustle. It's brilliant. Coach Holly Parrish will be happy with that one. And actually too sure on what the violation was there unfortunately ball will be the way of Rangiora still have six minutes to play so plenty of time for both these teams really no one has found their offensive rhythm at the moment just as I say that nice look for Rangiora can't execute unfortunately so plenty of time for these two teams to continue to find their feet continue to get to the looks that they like and the looks that are working for them Hannah Lawler, handoff with Hadley James at the top of the key. Launches a three. Offensive two upper is cleaned up by Hannah Lawler. Even Stevens. Could it for Firua on its way? No good. Again, a battle for the two upper. Just fumbles the ball. Kua puts up out of bounds. Absolute dime there. Just a little, maybe some sweat on the fingers or something. Or, it, oh, I thought that would have come off Wellington East, but I stand corrected. And they have three seconds to work with. Offensive two-dapper gives them an extra position. Great finish on the left hand. Fortunately, I've got no numbers for Wellington College in front of me, so I can't exactly tell you who's who. Harper McDonald gets her own offensive two dapper. That seems to be the theme of the game. A miss shot, then an offensive two dapper, which generates an extra position for these girls. Again, no team really finding their offensive rhythm. It's a nice spin cycle there for Wellington East. Really just as a game of chess at the moment. Just trading buckets. One team trying to get a lead. Kudu Fifirua. Let's count that as a pass. Shot clock violation nonetheless. Four and a half minutes left to go on this one. Wellington is yet to commit a hudit, which is a foul. Interesting stat. Utilizes the on-ball screen. Great switch from Rangiora. Kuru Fifirua is good. The lead getting away a little bit. The largest of this game so far, eight to five. Wellington East. Half McDonald going downhill on her right hand. Draws the hudit. Gets to the Kuru Totoku. Does the cheeky fake handoff. I always fall for that one. And good on the Kuru Totoku closes that gap. Just once again, 6-8 to eight and gets a hand in the passing lane. Just past four minutes of playtime left. Once in college, looking to get downhill. Getting two feet in the paint. Which is creating a lot of nice Outside looks for them. Although they cannot convert on that one. I like the way they're getting downhill. Getting two feet in the rohi kuru, which is the paint. And then finding those kickouts, which is generating a lot of open looks for them. Or for a secondary penetration. Which is really useful in 3 when you don't have that weak side help. Great dime to the corner. That deserved to go in. All nylon on that one. 10-6, the biggest lead of the game for Wellington East. Rangiora yet to find their rhythm offensively. Offensive two up uh, for Hannah Lawler. They need a bucket here. Kind of to stay within. Wellington East. Great defensive position. Left all alone. Loses her parts any tinny. Dribble a little bit. One second to get something going. Gets it off in time. The referees allow it. And bodies on the floor. But I think we'll see a Hara committed on the hustle there as you see bodies go to the ground you love to see these young women hustling and bustling to get a position 
Just ticked under three minutes. Left to go. Plenty of time for both these teams. Backdoor cut. Again, I missed what the call was, unfortunately, but that's going to be a no basket and a position for Wellington College. Timata Anu, a restart for them. Seven seconds to work with with the shot clock. No good from beyond the arc. Huge rebound from Hannah Lawler. Bodies all over the ground. Harper McDonald just throws an absolute dime. The easiest one of the game for Rangi Ora. 10-7 now. Wellington cannot answer. No good from beyond the arc. Rangi Ora again just struggling to find momentum and rhythm to match Wellington East at the moment who look in control. No good from the corner. Flies away, an errant pass. Manages to stay in bounds. Open as a bird. Hadley James connects from beyond the arc. One point game. 150 to go. Things are getting interesting here, folks. Huge two dupper from Hadley James. Rangiora could take the lead right now with a Kuru Fifi Rua. No good, Hadley James. Let's see that one more time. Ice in her veins to close the gap. She knew what was in the line and she delivered. Timeout called. A chance for these two to get their breath. To wait the strategy going forward. Obviously, it's a close game. You've got a minute and 30 left. So it's important that, A, defensively you're getting stopped and playing clean. And offensively, you're getting to the looks that you would like. Playing off two feet in the key. So a timely Wati Wahike, which is a timeout for these young girls. Good to see in 3x3, the coach really doesn't have a role. You can't coach from the sideline. So these girls have to take a lot of initiative to be player-led and coach themselves, which is really good for young athletes to kind of develop that leadership a little bit themselves. Love to see it. Can you tell that I coach young females? Check ball up the top here for Kyra, Le Kyra Leatham. Again, a chance for Rangi Ora to tie it or go in front. Bulls fumbled a little bit, only six seconds. Hadley James from her favourite spot. Can't go back to back, unfortunately. Kept in bounds by Wellington East. Smooth bucket to the rim, the hoop and the harm. Gets the hutter and we'll get a free throw too. See that shifty move one more time. I would have done the exact same thing, Hadley. 11-9 now. Chance to make it 12-9. But more comfortable for Wellington East with 1 minute 30 to go. Rangiora have to get an answer now or the game will start to slip. Harper McDonald has to fire. Just between the Tapa and the Papa Muri for that one. Wellington East can afford to slow things down a little bit and be patient, but Rangiora blows that one up. Oh, and a costly turnover. Disallows them to claw back at this lead. Great pressure from Rangiora causing a turnover. Dimes it all the way across to Kyra Leatham. Great perimeter defense from Wellington College. Doing a very good job moving their feet laterally, taking chest bumps. Oh, a huge intentional foul on that one. Hara Mahi Marika, we like to call that. See that one more time. Almost a rugby tackle. Not, not quite legal in the game of basketball, unfortunately. Obviously, the intention was to disallow a wide open layup. And she definitely did that. Good on the Kuru Totoku. This game slipping away a little bit. Wellington East have really put their foot down this last minute and a half. Executed very well. Hadley James gets the offensive two dupper twice. Absolute dime to Hannah Lawler, who can't execute as the little things. In the last couple of minutes, it's all about your execution and your efficiency. And if you're not making the little things like that, it's going to be difficult to get this one done. Wellington East look well in control now. Ring Yorda will have a final couple of positions to give it the best. Hannah Lawler fires away. Ten seconds on the clock now. Wellington East looking to wind things down. Put their mark on the scoreboard. 
14-9. Rangiora, will they have one final heave? They will, and it's no good. Wellington East with a big win over Rangiora High School. 14-9. A very close game throughout, but a really good last couple of minutes for Wellington East. A well-fought game, and good for them to get a win on the tally. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back with some quality boys basketball, St. John's and Otago boys. I believe both teams might be undefeated today, so stay tuned for that. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. One of our biggest problems we have in New Zealand is our lack of facilities, uh, the lack of ability for kids to be able to just go in and shoot hoops. But our hoops in schools, hoops in parks project enables kids to be able to get out there and just have a go, you know, just be able to shoot hoops and, and have no boundaries, just go out there, have some fun. Um, by not being able to get inside to a lot of facilities, this solves a lot of our problems. We're seeing the hoops that we've already installed just be so well utilised. Every time you drive past the school that's got these hoops in it, there's always kids using them. We know it's going to increase participation in our sport, which is a great thing. Yeah, hoops in schools means to me just a lot of opportunity that uh, when I look back and reflect on my experience, at home in Portland, Whangarei, and in the schools, and there wasn't a lot of hoops around, um, but what, there was the odd hoop, and we'd always meet there, all the uh, the locals, and um, we'd have a ball, have fun, and that was a game for all athletes that played all different sports. It's fantastic to see the ongoing growth of the Hoops and Schools program across the country uh, as we continue to go into different regions. Seeing Tamariki and, and Rangatahi continuing to have fun through better accessibility is just priceless. Uh, and the true value for us is seeing the positive impact it's having across communities here in New Zealand. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, we've been able to put 24 hoops into 12 schools right across the province. They were installed a month or so ago and already we've seen the impact that it's had with kids getting out in there and playing them outside of school hours and the weekends, it's really had a huge impact on, on the game. It was good to get into the community today and um, see the kids just having fun and being able to, you know, have access to these amazing hoops that have been put into new communities because um, a lot of schools don't have access to these things. Now, looking at this um, initiative of putting a lot more hoops in, in, in schools is amazing. Uh, I've been to three or four schools today and just seeing the, um, the faces of this young tamariki has been awesome. And uh, you know, it makes you think about where we're headed and where we've been and you know, it brings a smile to my face too. is about more than just the game. It's about going from teammates to best mates. It's the high fives and helping hands. That's why Caltex is proud to help fuel school sports. I'm Jason Bill and we farm around the mid north. We took a review of our business a couple of years ago, sort of identified challenges that we had. One was profitability and we'd noticed on our steep hill country, we're getting more and more erosion. We looked around to diversify looked at forestry to plant on our steeper country. For us, it really addressed those concerns. By doing the forest farm model, we feel like we're getting the best of both worlds. And I'm really excited and I really do believe in this model. I think it's the way. Kia ora everyone. No mai, haere mai. Welcome back to the afternoon session of 3x3 Secondary School Nationals. We have a top of the table matchup here, Otago Boys and St. John's College. 
For Tago Boys, we have Oak Chisholm, Mitchell Robinson, Harry Bezit, Karina Kayu, and Tom Wilson. And for St. John's, we have Bryson Hidawini, Dominic Pierce, Hunter Seville, Arama Tirangi, and Connor McKay. Nice little bucket there to start things off for St. John's. I believe both these teams may be yet to lose a game, so this will be huge in determining who is the top seed in this poll. Have commentated both these boys already early today and liked what I saw from both of them. The first game from Otago boys, sure, an absolute shooting display with the man from the man with the ball right now, Oak Chisholm, on cue. I give him commentators, Chris. Sorry, Oak. Uh, St. John's played a really nice inside game. Fortunately, don't have team numbers for them, so I can't exactly decipher who is who. Oak Chisholm goes to the, the rack and can't get that one to go, unfortunately. Still tied at one apiece. Just under nine minutes to go. Great swarming defense from Tom Wilson. Harry Bezit will dribble out. Ball in the hands of trusty Oak. Kuru Fifirua on its way. Zero from three to start. For Oak, uncharacteristic. Great in and out dribble, but blows it up. Does Otago boys. Three seconds to work with. Nice little step back, Bobby Jack for the midi. Can't get that one to go. No team very successful in shooting so far. And the trend continues. Can look for these boys to go downhill. Zigzag and glide to the cup. Maybe instead of shooting so many threes, the hoop and the harm. The and one is good for St. John's. Let's take another look at that. Just reaches across his body. Clear as mud to the referees. That's a Hara and a Kuru Totoku for St. John's. Chance to extend the lead now to three. No good on the Kuru Totoku, but the offensive two up uh, earlier this morning, St. John's had an offensive two up uh, on what it felt like every second position. Just generated lots of second chance opportunities for them to go downhill, and they are prolific scorers. I'm Maya Williamson, and I will be commentating all afternoon on this court. If you're sick of my voice already, I totally get it. I'm sick of mine too. Check up the top. We'll go the way of Otago Boys in the horn set. Oh, really nice reject there. Went to set the flare screen. Notice the open spot. Obviously, in 3x3, you have your set actions, then you have your wrinkles you make once the team starts to get used to those actions. Really good use of that for Otago boys to get themselves on the board. Score is two apiece. Seven and some change. Kurufifirua on its way. All ear for that one. And he subs himself off straight away. A fair enough two pie. Tapui, sorry, on that one. Just need a little breather. Great defense on the switch. And a travel whistled for St. John's. Tago will set up in there. Trusty horn set once again. Flare screen for Oak. Low post catch for Tom Wilson looking to just bully. Fadeaway jumper. No good. No Dirk Nowitzki in the house just yet. Top of the iron. Not often you see a top of the Papa Moody. Corner three happens sometimes. Tom Wilson lets it fly. Once again can't connect from beyond the arc. Both teams struggling to put one away. From that Kuru Fifirua line. Great hands from Tom Wilson. Grants his team another position. Looks to go downhill instead this time. Draws a lot of par, which is contact. Doesn't get the call. And that's how you do it downhill. Speedy Gonzalez. 3 2 now for St. John's. Just working on that right now. Cannot explain to you what just happened, but we are back. And we still have ourselves a good ball game. St. John's in the lead over Otago Boys, 8-5. to five. You can't see the shot clock. Scoreboard on your screen, sorry, but I'll keep you updated. Big block! St. John's say no way. A big toe putty. That's definitely going on the college highlight reel, that's for sure. St. John's whistled for a Hara. We've just got 
just under four minutes to play. St. John's looking pretty comfortable at the moment. Togo boys just struggling to shoot from beyond the arc, which has been a focal point of their offense coming into today. Tapoi will get Oak Chisholm back in the game. A switch neutralizes that off wall action. But a kudu, Fifi Rua is good, extending the lead. Once again for St. John's, 10 to 5 now. Bully ball in the paint and another Topare. St. John's disallowing anything. Huge defensive effort to get the swap from behind and then blow up that action. We're going to see a timeout called a Wata, Wati Wahike. Probably called by Otago Boys. 10 5 with three and a half minutes left to go. Obviously, Otago Boys typically a really good shooting team from beyond the arc. They aren't connecting at the moment. So it's up to them to find a different way for them to score, whether that be utilizing different actions they've run or using their shot fake to get downhill. They're obviously needing to find something outside of the two point shot to keep them alive and keep them within this game. St. John's doing a very good job defensively at neutralizing all actions and blowing things up. We just had two monster blocks back to back, which were huge. And a moving screen. So Targo Boy is trying to get to something different, but end up committing a violation. Low post catch and an absolute dime. St. John's all over it. Oak Chisholm, no success. Huge offensive two up it off the glass. 11-6. St. John's still sitting comfortably. Nice little half spin to the layup. Can't convert. Shake and bake. Oak has to release. Again, no luck. Very uncharacteristic of what I've seen of Oak Chisholm. Kuru Fifi Rua. Leather through lace. That is tough. 13 6. And just no luck on the other end. St. John's cooking on all cylinders right now. They are just eating up Otago boys and Otago boys lacking an answer. Coach Esteban Uradori spoke to him earlier today. Very confident as in his Otago boys side, but obviously when you put up that quantity of threes and can't get them to go, it is difficult to win games. And St. John's doing it from beyond the arc and in the key as well, which is hard to match. Kuru Fifirua again. Unsuccessful offensive two upper. Manages to save the ball inbounds. But straight to St. John's, who can't capitalize on that position, but get the offensive two upper. And the easy one. Leads almost at double digits. An unfavorable position for Otago boys. Oak Chisholm uses his speed to get to the rim. Closes that gap ever so slightly. Spin cycle, no good. Which is a bad angle for that layup. Kuru Fifi Rua just not falling for Otago boys. St. John's not having the same issue. Great find. Way to recognize a mismatch. Can't execute on that one. But another offensive two upper off the tupper and the papa muri. Little bully ball gets Otago boys on the clock. 16 to 8 with one and a half to go. Going to have to be a miracle for Otago boys to probably pull this one away. St. John's just getting what they want, exposing the lack of help side defense that comes with 3x3. Oak Chisholm sighs in frustration as he hits all air on that three-point attempt. Easy baseline drive and a good finish. 17-8 with one and some change to go. St. John's probably feeling pretty comfortable with the position they're in right now. And rightfully so. It's been 10 minutes of good basketball from them so far. Will we make it the duration? Or will they put the nails in the coffin early? No good on that Kudu Fifirua. Nice deflection out of bounds. Good to see that they're in the passing lanes. It's been a good battle for the top of this pool. St. John's clearly showing their dominance. It's been a prolific basketball school for years on end. Had a top four showing at the Second National Nationals last year. Right idea with the kick out. 
just poorly executed. See some fives after that one, obviously. Frustrating experience. Things just really not going their way today in this top of the table clash. Low post catch. Lovely action. Otago boys just lost. Need a map to try and guard that one. Ten point lead now for St. John's. Feeling comfortable. Otago boys really just have to jack things to try and come close. On ball screen, utilised well. A lot of space going downhill. Tough shot to put up. Somehow there was three Otago bodies, but St. John's still come up with the two dupper. Otago boys obviously wanting to claw their way at this lead as much as they can. 18 to 9. Looks like St. John's will just dribble this one out. I'm kidding. They're going to pull that one. Can't put the final nails in the coffin with a kudu if you do it. But as the whistle blows, St. John's have a comfortable win over Tiger Boys in the top of the table clash. 18 to 9. A great showing from St. John's. Someone to keep an eye on throughout this tournament. Keep your eyes and ears peeled for our next round. We have Tauranga Girls versus Kaipoi High. This is also a high table clash, so stick around for that one coming up soon after the break. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Hey Tom, it's been a while. Where have you been? Sorry man, I've been busy. Come and see what we have been doing. It's been a few years since we were here for the launch of the very first Hoops and Schools in South Auckland. Tell me what sort of impact these hoops have had in the school. Every day the kids play outside, um, morning, afternoon, morning tea, lunch times. Um, they're always outside playing basketball. We also run a sports academy. For an hour a day, um, half the group is doing basketball and the other half is off doing another sport. So we use it all the time. <laughs> That's good that they're being used. Uh, what about after school and the weekends and things? Is it uh, somewhere where you know, the community can kind of come together and play some basketball? Yeah, so um, after school we have our after school program who use this one, um, the one behind us quite a lot. Um, and then our gates are always open for the community to use all of the courts and um, facilities here. So awesome. yeah, they're getting used quite a lot, especially on days like this. What do you think this facility means to the kids to have a hoop like this at their school? I think it's awesome. Um, like you said, the accessibility sometimes um, if they're playing in like the community courts, there's the older kids or the, the adults that are kind of taking up the court. So to have it here at school, um, they're always using it. They don't feel pressured to be moving off anytime soon. And yeah, it's nice to see them using a lot of it. Um, I've seen massive numbers grow. Eh? Like uh, we started in the beginning of the year, we started a holiday camp and our numbers were like 20 kids. And now we've got 70 kids in the last holiday camp we just had. The interest has grown heaps. Having these basketball hoops out here just helps because a lot of the kids don't get that outside of school. Yep. So um, for them to be able to come and have a space where they can just fall and especially in the holidays. And are you guys running any sort of competitions outside of school that the kids are able to get into? Whakahaere uh, mātou, ko mātou kura i te tahi kaupapa, poitū kohu ki te Wharehākuna kina o Moana Ni Akiwa ki te Māngere Town Centre. Um, ki reira ka whakapakiri pūkenga mātou, ka prakatihi, a ka ako rātou i ngā tiri. Whakahaere mātou i te tahi whakataitai ki te taha o Legacy Wildcats. Um, ki reira ka tākoro rātou me e tahi atu kura o tēnei rohe o Māngere. I'm Trevor Johnson and I'm a sheep and beef farmer from the Forgotten World Highway. Some of the country we bought 
was quite steep and difficult. We have pushed those blocks to pine trees, a thousand hectares into forest and seven thousand hectares will stay in grazing. To me it's just the best use of land. If you've got land that is not so productive it's a marvellous way of increasing your income. And go! Just fill up at a participating Caltex, stack your pump discounts, and you could collect more savings on your next visit. Oh, there's another one. Getting quite good at this. Ah, filling and saving feels good. Kia ora everyone. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the afternoon session of day one. 3x3 Secondary School Nationals run by the brilliant Basketball New Zealand, sponsored by the wonderful Baileys and Caltex. This live stream is brought to you by the magnificent Whakata Māori. We have ourselves a ball game on our hands, a high table clash for the women's side, Tauranga Girls College versus Kaipoi College, Kaipoi High School rather, and the Windy City of Wellington at the Ako Tangi Sports Centre. I'm Maya Williamson and I'm solo commentating today. Sorry if you get sick of me by the end of this game. Let's head over to the team list for Kai Boy. We have Alia Rose Newton, Anika Shaw, Maddie Gasconi, and Hannah Tolly, as well as Eva Perry. Tauranga Girls College have themselves a strong side with Anika Highland, Maya Kahura, Arita Kahura, Jayla Tiki, and Riley McLenahan. Anika Highland, someone to keep your eye out for. She was absolutely phenomenal in her clash earlier today. I believe she hit four out of five. Kuru Fifituru attempts. Was just recently at the Asia Cup with the 3x3 Tallfern squad as a travelling reserve. To be in that position as a year 13 is a testament to how she plays. Another person to keep your eye out for is Alia Newton of Kaipoi High. Played in the New Zealand under-17 3x3 team a few years ago when they went away to Malaysia. So two prominent 3x3 players. We're lucky to have this matchup in front of us as Kai Poi will get things going. In the matchup that we speak about right there, Hannah Tolly going downhill on her right hand. Defended well by Anika Highland. She'll contest the offensive two up but comes off her foot. Ball the way of Tauranga. See that once again, a great wall up. Contest for the offensive two up. Can't get that one to go. Arita Kahura sees space, likes it. Anika Short, huge rebound with a small counterpart on her at Riley McLennan. Riley, body on the line. Aaliyah can't get that one to go. Uncharacteristic miss right in front of the hoop. Anika Short does a great job putting her body on Anika Highland. Aritza Kahura starts things off from beyond the arc. Yatsi and gets the ball back and goes downhill. Can't convert though. Better from beyond the arc maybe. Aaliyah Newton goes for one of her own. Ball back in the hands of Aritza. Great kick out. Can't get two in a row. Can Aritza? Aaliyah Newton reads that one very well from the back line. Riley McLenahan, just a fearless young lady. And a nice conversion there from Aaliyah Newton. 2-1. Just ticked under three, nine minutes left to go. Aritza, an easy one. One of the easiest she'll probably get tonight. Score is 2-1. Aliyah, nowhere to go, really. Nice job being active after that cut. After the pass, rather. Should be 2-all. Maybe not. 3-2 is a score. Tauranga, eight minutes left to go. Anika Shaw uses the high on ball. Stuck up the top. Riley McLenahan makes it trouble. Ball should stay with Kai Boy here. Only three seconds to go on the shot clock. Going to have to get something going pretty quickly to avoid forcing the shot clock error. Hannah Tolly uses her jab step and gets downhill on her right hand but cannot convert everything. But Aaliyah does a great job moving her feet. And Nika Highland, oh, you don't want to leave her open. A rear miss. But an offensive two up. And Nika pulls once again. More legs in that one but still can't convert. Aaliyah Newton downhill on her left hand, her favourite hand. Short off the tapa on that one. Low post catch for Aretta. Ball movement is lovely. Jayla Tiki 
Can't get one to go either. Both teams, lower percentage from beyond the arc. Anika Shua showing her handles. Oh, pulls out the DIY kit. And the lovely left hand finish. Three apiece. Anika Highland attacks downhill. Little shake and bake moment. And a tough finish from her too. Woman playing hoops, man. Aaliyah Newton blows the wide open lap. Obviously frustrated with herself. The clap and frustration. An uncharacteristic miss. Obviously the afternoon session is a bit of a graveyard one. Really got to dig deep to find the energy in the legs. 3x3 is a very tiring game. I can speak that from experience. High on ball. Lovely pass to a rolling Hannah Tolley. Can't get the finish, but draws a hut. Will be a check up the top. See that dime once again. Point God, Ali and Newton. Backdoor cut from Anika Short. Cheats the dribble handoff. Anika Highland forced to dribble that from beyond the arc. Jalateki will attack. Anika Highland, can she get going? Yes, she can. Cash me out. 6-4. Six, Six and some change. Hannah Tolley not finding a lot of luck from just in front of the rim. And ball goes out of bounds. Hannah Tolley, typically a really good big for this Kaipoi team. Obviously, they use her a lot, whether that be attacking downhill on her right hand or setting a screen and rolling. Not having a lot of luck today, though. Anika Shaw, same read. Back to a cut. Off of that dribble handoff. Obviously one that you can get a lot in this 3x3 game because there is no weak side help. Travel call there for Aaliyah Newton. Just shuffled her pivot foot as she went to jab. Still six minutes left to go, which is like an eternity in basketball. Nika Highland somehow stays in control and gets up. Nice little float in front of the rim. 7-4 now for Tauranga. Jayla Tiki does a very good job blowing that up. Let's see that again. The Patsini Tini just knocked out of Anika Shaw's hands. And going to go to the position of Tauranga College. Anika not even looking at the rim. Riley McLenahan uses her jab step. Still an under 15 kid. Only going into year 10 this year, which is very impressive. I believe it should be a shot clock violation. Goes out of bounds either way. See that again. Anika Short blocks right back into her face. Possibly the worst type of block you can get. Anatoly crossover to her left hand. Again, just struggling. Maya Kahurana, well defended by Aaliyah Newton. Not happy with that call, but the Hutter whistled nonetheless. Does a very good job at moving her feet and taking that in her chest. Just brings the hand down at the last second. One that can get a lot of players in trouble. Can speak for myself on that one. Offensive rebound for Anika Highland. Riley McLennan now goes to her left hand, which she loves. And another Hutter whistled for Kai Hoyt. That's their second now. Not in too much of a dangerous position, but one you don't want to be in. Hand off to Riley McLenahan. A lot of dribbling here, not a lot going on. Anika Highland needs to get something up. Shot clock whistled. The foul was called first, but I believe. Nope, we're gonna go with the foul before the shot clock. So Anika Highland will get the chance to go to the free throw line for the Kuru Tautaku. And converts on that one. 8-4 lead now. Kaipoi exhausting all their scoring outlets. Just can't get anything to go at the moment. Yeah, Maddie Gascone short again. The right-hand layout. That is someone you don't want to leave open. Can't get the nylon on that one. But the offensive two-dapper gives him another position. Arita Kahura. Another someone you don't want to let them fly. The Sodoma girls team are very well balanced. Alia Newton, how in the physics does that even happen? That was defying gravity in a shot. Somehow it gets the shooter's touch, the hoop and the harm. We'll get a Kuru Totaku on the way as well. 
Good on that one. 9-6 now. Anika Highland. Short. Maybe I put the commentator's curse on her when I said that she went four from five in the other game. And Ahara called all hands over Aaliyah Newton. Fresh set of 12. Hannah Tolley needs to get one to go. Cannot. And is frustrated about that. Maka Taupatu called. Bodies on the floor. And ball gets rewarded to the defensive team. Nick Highland poised, controlled. Hands all over it though from Kai Poi. Come up with a steal. They'll be very desperately wanting a bucket to go for themselves right now. Nika Shaw attacks. Nowhere to go. Has to force something up. Does Hannah Tolley. Riley sees space. She likes it. Lady Gasconi. Is that a third time on the floor this game? Love to see it. Believe that's a timeout. Signal for Anika Highland. Smart timeout. Obviously both teams have a timeout each that they can call whenever they see fit. A good lead for Tauranga. 9-6. Pretty low scoring game. Both offences have been relatively slow. Got three and a half minutes left to play. Tauranga girls, a lot of great communication here. Obviously this, the scoring started hot. They have lost a little bit of rhythm, but so have Kaipui. Both teams not really finding their rhythm just yet in terms of their offensive scoring. Couldn't find a solid outlet to go to. There's Jenna Cooney, head coach of the Tauranga girls college team. Led them to a fourth place finish at secondary school nationals last year. Obviously a key part of this Tauranga girls college team is Palace Hokianga, who is not here today. I believe she goes away with the under-17 New Zealand team to a pre-World Cup tour, so saving herself for that. Good swarming defense here from Tauranga, but Anika Shaw gets to the rim nonetheless. Violation occurred. Will be Tauranga Girls College ball. Lovely relocation from Anika Highland. Finds her in the corner. Beyond the arc, no good again for Anika Highland. Not having herself the bestest game she's ever had. Ball up whistled for Anika Highland. Hannah Tully is putting in some serious work down low. Let's see that one more time. Hannah Tully really does a great job of emulating what a big is in the modern game of basketball. She's dominant down low, great footwork. And great finishing, but she can attack downhill off the dribble too. Makes herself a very versatile threat. One that's hard to guard and one that's very useful in 3x3 game. Tauranga lead by two. Just under three minutes to play. Really anyone's game at this point, although all momentum is in favour of Tauranga at the moment. Cross screen for Jalateki. Areta Kahura. It's a fly. Offensive rebound. Areta finds her way to the rim. Zigging and zagging for a nice reverse layup. 10-7 now at the score. Moving screen called on Hannah Tolley. So nice little scoop layup once again. Aaliyah Newton back in the game. A smart tapui. You'd probably want the ball in her hands. Generating some type of offense for this Kaipoi team as we get into the last stretch. Good hands from Hannah Tolley. Hannah Tolley rejects, giving it back. And a travel called. Couple of mistakes, these last few positions. These are valuable positions for Kaipoi if they want to edge back at this lead. You obviously want to get some points on the board. You don't want to generate any extra positions for Tauranga Girls College. Where they can do that, Kura Fifi Rua for Areta Kahura. Extends the lead now to five for Tauranga. And nothing for Kaipoi. Can't answer. Very difficult position now for Kaipoi to be in. Aritza Kahura trying to make it even more difficult. The offensive two-dup has been huge for Tauranga today. And an easy one. Probably the easiest Tauranga have seen maybe all of today. 
A six point game with a minute and a half is a tough feat for Kai Point. Totaling it being dominant from the get go. Alia Newton wants to just go downhill and get a bucket. Aretsa Kahura, great hands and a great wall up. Does a good job at timing that block. Brings her hands down only when appropriate and only gets the ball. Forces Kai Boy to have a team at Ano, a restart with only two seconds. Maddie Gasconi goes downhill but can't get the finish. Million dollar move, 50 cent finish, some coin that. Head off in the corner for Aretsa Kahura. Crosses back to her left. It's been her game today. Awesome to see Tauranga Girls College in their depth of talent. Anika Highland won them the game earlier this, today with her shooting. Aretsa Kahura has been the dominant force in this one. Alia Newton gets the easy to go. Probably too late though. 13-8, just under a minute to go. And Jayla Tiki answers right back with one of her own. 14-8, Tauranga now. Alia Newton spins. Cannot convert. Maddie Gasconi. Aretsa Kahu now to control the pace. Ball reversal goes to Jayla Teki. Nice shot on her. Can't get the Kuru Fifirua to go. Only Newton battling to go to her left hand. Nice backdoor cut from Anika Shaw. That's her third of the game. Third easy layup just from that backdoor cut. But it's a little too late for Kai Poi. 14-9 is the score. Tauranga. Finishing things off with a nice little floater. And that will do us, team. 15-9. Great win from Tauranga over Kaipoi Hoi. Kaipoi High. Aretsa Kahura. A really great game from her. And a dominant performance. We've got a few more games to come today. Aquinas College and St. Thomas Boys coming up next. So don't go anywhere. Global warming is incredibly serious. We need to cut emissions, but we need to also absorb carbon out of the atmosphere. Growing trees is the only tool we have in the toolbox for taking carbon out of the atmosphere that we can do at scale. Pinus radiata takes carbon out of the atmosphere at about five to 10 times the rate of native planting. And so what New Zealand carbon farming are doing is planting the Pinus radiata to absorb the carbon, and then they're transitioning that forest into native forests so that we get the biodiversity benefits. Summer Tournament 2024 from Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through a really tough time. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved in this. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo. This is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on. And so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools. It really is. Okay. Yes. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. Maybe go one. We're going to And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Baileys finding buyers that others can't.
just want to welcome everyone here today. Good everyone. No my hearty my welcome back to the afternoon session of day one. Secondary schools three on three nationals. What a tournament it's been so far. We've had some very exciting games and the vibes are high. We've got a great matchup here today. St. Thomas College versus Aquinas College. Both teams with very different playing styles, but are very well coached teams and performed very well at the secondary school nationals last year. So we're very excited to see how this one goes down for Aquinas College. We've got Kai Money, Co Moana, CJ Flavel, Michael Wade, I think he likes to coin himself Money Mike Wade, and Dan Day. For the St. Thomas side, we have Caleb Clarkson, Max Farley, Jack Farley, Rewa Simons, and Nico Johnson. The Aquinas College team, of course, coached by a very experienced Alex Stojkovic. Knows a lot about the 3x3 game. I'm excited to see the kind of style of play they play with. Caleb Clarkson, the pull-up J to start things off. The foul whistled against Max Farley. Ball will go with Aquinas College. Shout out to our sponsors, Bailey's and Caltex, and the GGG Girls Got Game Initiative. And for Fuck Arts and Māori for allowing this wonderful live stream to go ahead and let all you viewers at home watch this wonderful basketball as we're underway with an easy one for Aquinas College. Rewa Simons looking to go on his left hand, which is his favourite. CJ Flavel does a very good job. Keeps the ball in bounds right to Max Farley. Probably not quite the pass he was intending. See that again. Quite fortuitous uh, for St. Thomas there. Great kick out. Kaimani. Dribbles the ball out of bounds. Good wall up there from Max Farley on that extra pass. Manages to contain and put a body on that one. Now they only have three seconds to work with. CJ Flavel is just going to pull with confidence. And shot clock violation is not whistled by the referees, but will continue nonetheless. Reba Simons likes his chances. Dish to the corner. Caleb Clarkson attacks that long closeout. And Max Farley... Three attempts and nothing. Caleb Clarkson, though, unlikely offensive rebounder, gets to the rim against Money Mike Wade. Good wall up. CJ Flavel, just incredible athleticism, able to get to the rim in one or two dribbles and finishes really well. Let's just see that one more time. Just the speed of that first step and the ability to absorb contact. Just such an athlete. Extended their lead now, 2-0. St. Thomas still searching for their first bucket. That Max Farley one must not have counted. I think it was an out-of-bounds violation first. Rewa Simons looking to go ISO today, but defended well by Kaimani Komoana. And CJ Flavel rips that one up. Money Mike Wade, can he earn his nickname? Not just yet. Lovely inside-out action. Max Farley tips that one in. Easy 2-1 to -one lead. Money Mike Wade. Draws the par on that one. The contact will head for a Kuru Totoku. Love the battle of the little guards. Short on the Kuru Totoku. Maybe I shouldn't have given him that nickname too early. Possibly a commentator's curse. High on ball used here by Caleb Clarkson. Steps back. Beyond the arc, all air on that one. Ball goes out of bounds. 
First tapui of the game for St. Thomas. Nico Johnson, Johnson in now. Lovely action from the Aquinas College team here. Obviously the work of Alex Stojkovic. Kurufifi Rua, no good. Still hunting for our first one of the game. But Iwa Simons dancing. Takes a lot of contact to get the hoop and the harm. Great finish through arms. CJ Flavel all over that one, trying to take his lunch money. And Lewitt can convert. Can he put St. Thomas in front? He cannot. Takes a hard fall to the ground, Rewa, but he's back up straight away. Absolute soldier. Discussion between Team Gray. Seven forty to go. Low scoring game so far. Only two all. Kaimani with the spin move. No good on that one, unfortunately. Jack Farley, younger brother of Max Farley, looks to attack downhill. Kaimani whistled for a foul. Aggressive and physical game early. But that's what you like to see, and that's what you expect from 3x3 basketball. High on ball. Mike blows that one up and is not happy with that Haraku. Again, just creeping up for Aquinas College, and there he is. Alex Stojkovic, the GOAT himself. If you don't know, get reading about him. Caleb Clarkson from Beyond the Arc. And Kai Mani has something to say about that. Is this the start of an absolute blinder of some two-point shooting? I really hope it is. Just in rhythm. Amazing that a guy his size who has great footwork and interior game can also light it up from Beyond the Arc like that. Just beautiful in rhythm. Lovely technical shot. Utilises an on-ball from Mike Wade. Feel like a bit of a roll reversal there. Gets the bucket to go. One point lead now. Still plenty of time on the clock. Rewa likes this mismatch. Boomerangs it to go downhill. But great vertical slide from Kaimani. Caleb Clarkson with a hand in the face. But I don't think that'll count. I think he may have stepped the out-of-bounds line or a shot clock violation. CJ Flavel looks for that one. Can't get it to go. Money Mike Wade still yet to earn his nickname. Caleb Clarkson with a hot hand. No good. Max Farley working overtime to get those rebounds. Riwa again just showing his willingness to go downhill on his left hand. Three seconds of the paint though. Can't stay in the Rohukuru for that long. Aquinas College now with the chance to extend their lead. Kaimani's just going to pull with confidence. Looking like my dear friend Caitlin Clark. Never thought I'd get to the point where I'm making a woman's reference in a man's game. And that feels awesome. High on ball for Caleb Clarkson. Going downhill. Likes his matchup and gets a nice finish. Even Stevens now. Kaimani. Gets the ball in the high post. A lot of off-ball movement for the Aquinas team. Putting heaps of pressure on the St. Thomas defense in their communication. Mike Wade spins everything but. And errant turnover. CJ Flavel applying pressure for Max Farley. Causing him to turn the ball over. They're going to say no tap on that one. So ball will go position of CJ Flavel. Five and a half to go. Go screen for Mike Wade. I'm not seeing the money part of that nickname just yet. But great looks for Aquinas. You cannot be unhappy with a wide open look for a quality two point shooter. Max Farley, lovely finish. Hutter called against Aquinas College. They're fourth now. So once they get to seven, that means two free throws on any foul for St. Thomas. So Aquinas College, despite 
their physicality need to be a little bit careful. Kaimani sees the matchup, likes it, takes it, buckets. Great on ball defense. But Caleb Clarkson gets to his left hand. He is chefing today. Mike, lovely finish. Just rolls off the hand for that one. We are even Stevens. Rewa gets to his left hand as well. Again, that willingness to go downhill. Uses his body really well to get to his left hand. Kaimani leaves that one short. We've got an absolute blinder of a ball game on our hands. Caleb Clarkson, step back, Bobby Jack. Oh, that would have been a highlight reel if that went in. Kaimani recognises the matchup. That was always going to be a little bit too easy for him. Biwa obviously having a lot of success with his ISO game so far. CJ Flavel does a really good job at helping from that gap. Haven't seen a lot from CJ Flavel just yet. And Caleb Clarkson. Unlikely for him to win that matchup in the post. Hard over height. Riwa. Can't get that left hand layup to go. CJ Flavel left all alone. Can't hit. There's that athleticism over the top of the hoop. Almost went over the Papa Muri. That would have been the coolest thing I've ever seen happen in real life if it went in. We have a Tapui in for Aquinas. Their first of the game, Dan Day. Kaimani will just pull. Obviously had to force that one up with the shot clock. St. Thomas doing a really good job at containing Aquinas' off-ball movement. They're moving a lot, whether that be relocating or using off-ball actions to get them open. And St. Thomas doing actually a really good job at rotating, communicating, and neutralizing their actions. Caleb Clarkson, the man of the hour. Max Farley cannot convert the wonderful dish. And hands all over CJ on that two upper. The hutter is committed. And St. Thomas now up to four hutters themselves. Yeah, hands all over him as CJ came down. Kaimani. We're going to see an offensive foul call here on the screen. Couldn't recognize which one it was. Nonetheless, a timely turnover. Obviously, we're even Stevens right now. Max Farley. <laughs> fourth time's a charm. Yep, fourth time's a charm. That's the saying now. Manages to get not one, but two, not three, but four offensive two duppers before he gets the hutter. <laughs> and a Kuru Totaku on its way. Can't hit the dagger. But younger brother Jack Farley gets the offensive two dupper And again, he loves stat padding. Caleb Clarkson can't get his Kuru Fifi Rua to go. And younger brother Jack Farley shows Max. Hey, you do it like this. School bench just having discussions with the referee on whether or not that basket counted as well as the foul. I'd say it would be an and one if he's at the free throw line. No, so the situation is the basket did not count, but Aquinas College are now up to seven hutters, seven fouls. So it's in the bonus. So every foul from now on is going to result in two free throws. Hence why Jack Farley has two. Missed the first. Kuru Totaku. And splits the pier. 10-8 lead. Oh, that basket did count for St. Thomas. So 10-8 lead now for them. Two and a half minutes left to go. No biggie in the game of 3x3. Mike Wade, the hoop and the harm. Bucket should count. And he should get one from the line as well. Again, a little bit of confusion with the score bench. Mike expressing his feelings very clearly. 
will be in communication with the school bench team Gray. From my opinion, yeah, the bucket should count as well as a free throw. The air is cleared. Barker will count. Mike Wade now with a chance to tie things up with two minutes and 20 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and be crazy, and I'm going to call an overtime finish right now. That may be totally out the gate, and I could be totally wrong, but I'm going to call it anyway. Caleb Clarkson, the on-ball drop-off to Max Farley. Can't get the finish to go. Yeah, huge physicality on that rebound. Huddle whistled, and rightfully so. Big rebound by Kai Moana. Up to five hudders now for St. Thomas. Referees having a discussion. Obviously, there is you've got to allow the team to clear the ball as well. Going to be a game delay warning. So that'll result in a free throw for Aquinas and possession as well. Obviously, you can't play that defense in the charge circle. You have to allow them to clear the ball out. So Money Mike Wade, the chosen person for that one. And they'll have possession up the top as well. So a timely foul given by Max Farley. Obviously not a favorable position. And they're in six fouls too, so next one will be bonus. CJ Flavel can't connect. Caleb Clarkson almost falls over, but able to get to the rim. 11-0 and another stoppage. Referee having some words to the boys. I believe it was just a warning for the game delay. Have to let these know, boys know about the rules. Money Mike Wade. He can't do it. Kai Money can't do it either. St. Thomas now a chance to put themselves back in the lead. Rewa. Finds Caleb, who's been the man of the game so far for St. Thomas. Should be actually looking down at the shot clock. And that will not count. It wasn't totally clear. The buzzer didn't go off. But the shot clock had run out before Rewa put that shot up. Caleb Clarkson signaling to his bench. You need to call that. And, you know, he's right. Their bench's job is to see shot clock winding down and to call it out. Now Aquinas a chance to take the lead. Mike, nothing going on with their off-ball action, so goes downhill, but can't get that to go either. Is my overtime prediction going to be right? I'm going to feel so good about myself if it is. Caleb Clarkson uses his footwork. And shot clock violation as that one didn't hit the rim. 50 seconds on the clock. Probably going to see about four to five more positions in the game. Aquinas and St. Thomas both with their best three on at the moment. Kaimani goes to reject. I want to say he's whistled for a travel. So St. Thomas going to take their time out now. 50 seconds to go. It's an even ball game. If St. Thomas foul one more time, they're also in the bonus. So there's a lot riding on this one. For both sides, obviously... Your offensive positions are extremely important. You have to be efficient and execute the looks that you want. Get the ball into the hands of the right people. And defensively, it's all about getting stops, communicating, being physical, but not giving up fouls. Obviously, you don't want to give away two free throws to the other team. If it gets 10 fouls, you give away two free throws and position. So these boys have to be careful about their physicality. But what a ball game we have on our hands. This is certainly delivering. Both teams obviously well coached thanks to Alex Stojkovic and Joe Hammond. Down screen, Riwa. Obviously, again, he's shown his willingness to go downhill. Max Farley catches the ball on the low post. Doesn't have a lot of time to work with. Max Farley, huge bucket. Puts the Thomas up by one. Only 30 seconds to work with. Aquinas College got to get something going. CJ Flavel being relatively quiet. Comes off the tupper. I think Kaimani got a little bit confused about that, where that whistle came from. 
and travelled as a result of that. Technical foul is whistled. I am not totally sure as to why. Nevertheless, St. Thomas have a kuru tautaku. Great for them to capitalise on. Caleb Clarkson can't connect with that one. They will also come up with possession. And Aquinas College will utilise their timeout. So it's not all over. 20 seconds could be two positions. And it's only a one-point game. All Aquinas College has to do is get a stop and then utilise their possession well. Obviously, they had that offensive two-dupper, but then a travel call from Kaimani allowed them to lose it. St. Thomas now can take the time. They only have a 12-second shot clock. Can't take all the time in the world. But for them, they know Aquinas College is in foul trouble and they have the upper hand in this situation. But what an exciting finish to this kind of 3x3 game. This is why we come to these events and this is the kind of basketball that we love. Let's see what St. Thomas can cook up now. Down screen for Rewa Simons. Will they get him going on his left hand or will they give the ball to Max Farley? CJ Fellow doing a good job pushing him up. Oh, and whistled for the foul. CJ Flavel. A little bit overzealous on the contact. Interesting, interesting decision to not have Kai Mani guarding Max Farley on that position. Two free throws now for Max. Going to make him earn those points. Good on the first. The big fella shows no hesitation. Massive ice in the veins if he makes this one too. Kamani breaks early, but the bank is open for Max Farley. They've really got to get a two going. They want to claw back. Money Mike Wade, it's a good look, but can't convert. And they're going to dribble out. They're going to have a foul whistle, but I believe that is the end of the game. And St. Thomas, ice in their veins put the nails in the coffin to get the win over Aquinas College 14 to 11 a well fought battle and a really high quality 3x3 game I really enjoyed myself didn't quite get the overtime finish that I predicted but nonetheless we move next up we have an absolute blinder of a girls game both teams undefeated so far in the girls competition we have Takura Kotu for St Andrews Girls College stick around for that blinder Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. One of our biggest problems we have in New Zealand is our lack of facilities, uh, the lack of ability for kids to be able to just go in and shoot hoops. But our Hoops in Schools, Hoops in Parks project enables kids to be able to get out there and just have a go, you know, just be able to shoot hoops and, and have no boundaries, just go out there, have some fun. Um, by not being able to get inside to a lot of facilities, this solves a lot of our problems. We're seeing the hoops that we've already installed just be so well utilised every time you drive past the school that's got these hoops in it, there's always kids using them. We know it's going to increase participation in our sport, which is a great thing. Yeah, hoops in schools means to me just a lot of opportunity that uh, when I look back and reflect on my experience at home in Portland, Whangarei, and in, in the schools, and there, there wasn't a lot of hoops around, um, but what, there was the odd hoop, and we'd always meet there, all the, uh, the locals, and um, we'd have a ball, have fun, and that was a game for all athletes that played all different sports. It's fantastic to see the ongoing growth of the Hoops and Schools program across the country uh, as we continue to go into different regions. Seeing Tamariki and, and Rangatahi continuing to have fun through better accessibility is just priceless. Uh, and the true value for us is seeing the positive impact it's having across communities here in New Zealand. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, we've been able to put 24 hoops into 12 schools right across the province. They were installed a month or so ago and already we've seen the impact that it's had with kids getting out in there and playing them outside of school hours and the weekends. It's really had a huge impact on, on the game. It's good to get into the community today and 
um, see the kids just having fun and being able to, you know, have access to these amazing hoops that are being put into new communities because um, a lot of schools don't have access to these things. Now, looking at this um, initiative of putting a lot more hoops in, in, in schools is amazing. Uh, I've been to three or four schools today and just seeing the, um, the faces of this young tamariki has been awesome. And uh, you know, it makes you think about where we're headed and where we've been and you know, it brings a smile to my face too. Sport is about more than just the game. It's about going from teammates to best mates. It's the high fives and helping hands. That's why Caltex is proud to help fuel school sports. Oh, I'm Jason. No, my hearty, my good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the tail end of day one. Three x three secondary school nationals. Just had a really great ball game between a high table matchup. And we have another one here in front of us. St. Andrews College versus Tikura Kotsu. An absolute blind of a matchup. I'm Maya Williamson here in the Windy City taking you through this afternoon. For St. Andrews College, we have Ava Jones, Rafferty Powell, and Ophelia Powell, Alice Sharp, and Manaya Tofu. For Tikura Kotsu, we have Waikimi here, Douglas Corona, Nahita Homaraha, Homaha Waheki Rio. Marewa, Wairia, Tamai, and Kali Kale. Tikura Kotu with an early bucket. St. Andrews College finished first in the South Island Regional Qualifiers. They've had an absolute blinder over the last few years. Two back-to-back second-place finishes at Secondary School Nationals. And I believe they have won four Christchurch competition wins in a row. So dating back to about 2021, they have not lost really since then. Tikita Kotsu had a third place finish at their regional qualifiers. So we've got a ball game on our hands, that's for sure. High post catch for Manaya goes to Ava Jones, sister of Maya and Hayden Jones. An extraordinary basketball family, possibly one of the best in New Zealand history. Naherata Homaha, no good on that right hand layup. Rafferty Powell, not to be confused with, twin sister who you'll see soon, Ophelia Powell. I know, confusing. Waikimi here whistled for the Hara. And Ava Jones will go to the line to shoot a Kuru Tautuku. Ava Jones just moved down here this year from Waimea College to play some quality basketball at St. Andrews. Is settling in well, as can be seen. 2 1 lead early for St. Andrews. Waiheke Rio, part of the junior tall ferns last year that went away to the Oceania Championships. And goodness me, is she built for three on three. Super speedy, shifty guard as she evens things up against Rafferty Powell. Raff looks to go get one on her and can't get that one to go. Nahirata Homaha. A young kid, just under 15 last year. I believe she's bottom age 17s this year. Waikimi here. Gets the end one. The hoop and the harm. An elite finisher, Waikimi here. Really great size. But very agile with great footwork and a great touch for her size as well. Went away with the under-17 New Zealand team to their Asia Championships last year. Coached by the wonderful Mel Bennett. Hello, Mel, if you're watching still. No good off the tupper for Y. Kimi here. Now we have twin sister Ophelia Powell. Try not to get confused. I feel they got a little bit lost. Thought she was dishing that off to Ava. Had to put a shot up at the last minute. But the offensive two up comes for Ava and the hoop and the harm. And one against a smaller Marewa. Ava Jones, probably the prolific scorer in this team out of them all.
Brother Hayden Jones having a really good season with the Nelson Giants thus far. And elder sister Maya had a really great freshman season with her college St. Mary's. And obviously her parents, some of the most legendary New Zealand basketball players ever. So pretty good genes in that family. Great rebound from Manaya. Ophelia Powell going downhill on her left hand as she likes to do. And a great finish against the bigger Waikimi here. Just ticked under eight minutes to play. Waiheke Rio proving why she's a great 3x3 player. The battle of Ava and Waikimi here. Great wall up. But Ava whistled for the foul. Always like to see a battle of bigs. Obviously, the modern basketball is moving away from the fundamental big position. It's always nice to see two of them go at it in the low post. Kuru Totoku on its way from Waikimi here. Out of bounds. I believe that last came off Alice Sharp. I am wrong. Luckily, I'm not a referee. Horn set up the top. Look for Alice Sharp. Ava Jones rejects the handoff. Wide open to the rim. She's looking to be dominant early. 6-3 lead for St. Andrews. Waikimi here seems to be the go-to. Ava Jones. Not in my house. Thank you very much. Waikimi here answers back with one strip of her own. Carly Kalt. Can't get that one to go. And Ava's all over it. Good extra pass to the corner. Waiheke Rio says no. Twin sisters tapui for each other. Ball up the top for Kali Kau. Down screen to get Waiheke Rio open. If I'm Waiheke, I'm just ripping and going downhill. Looks for Waikimi here off the roll. Waikimi here likes the matchup. Rafferty Pow being extra physical with her. Doesn't quite have the juice to keep up with Waikimi here. As we see that one more time. Rafferty putting her body on the line. But Waikimi here obviously just the dominant one in that matchup. And good on the Kuru Totoku. Two feet in the paint for Rafferty Powell. Open from beyond the arc. Nahiratsa Homaha. Use her long limbs for the rebound. And so much physicality at the moment. Obviously, there's no Hara Tinanas, which are personal fouls in the game of 3x3, which Rafferty Powell is probably feeling a lot of relief about at the moment. Waiheke Rio, the Hezi. Can't get the finish. Million dollar move, 50 cent finish, but gets the Hutter. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Back rim off the free throw. No good from the Kuru Fifi Rua. Ella Sharp looking to get some of her own. And good finish. Little left hand baby hook. I like that. 7-4 now at St. Andrews. Just under six minutes left to go. To Kurakoto, a little bit of stagnation in their offense. Waikimi here seems to be the only one really getting something going. Flash cut from Ava Jones. Raf looking to get in her bag. And shot clock should be well expired by St. Andrews. To Kurakoto, utilize. The slip on the on ball. Waikimi here free as a bird. Absolutely nobody in sight. 5 7 now. And Nahirata Homaha, a huge swap on the three point line. And then goes and gets one of her own. A huge back to back position for the young gun with the huge topare, the block. And then downhill and draws the foul. Love to see these young guns come in here and play a senior game and just be absolutely unfazed. I've seen it across the board from a bunch of under-15 and under-17 players. Another one of which is sitting that screen right now, Manaya from St. Andrews College. 
Only year 10. Three seconds in the key, probably from both Ophelia and Manaya. Spacing a little bit of an issue for those guys. Obviously, Manaya being in the key didn't allow for Ophelia the room to go downhill, which is what Ophelia likes to do. By Hikirio looking to play with her lunch. May I have this dance? Technical foul issued on Ophelia Powell. I actually cannot tell you why that is. I wish I could. Um, yep, I've, really, I've got no words for that. I don't know what the whistle is for. Nevertheless, Waikirio will capitalize with a Kurakotuku and evens things up. They'll get position as well. Ophelia will take a seat. Obviously, the aggressive switch is the preferred screen coverage. Waiheke Rio didn't get the foul call, but gave away the travel. Nice little horns action. Get Rafferty Power, but Nahirata Homaha with another toe buddy. Her second block that I've seen so far. Those long limbs. What I would do to have long arms. Wahikirio given the space to just go downhill, proving herself to be unguardable. Love to see a highlight reel of just Wahikirio's hesitation dribbles. A little bit messy from the stack offense. Tikurakotu with all momentum in their favor at the moment. Wahikirio likes the matchup she has. Oh my goodness, just leaves Rafferty Powell in the dust. St. Andrew's struggling to come up with an answer for this right now. Waiheke Rio is a problem. And a lot of physicality from Rafferty is the only thing that can stop that deadly hezzy. My goodness. Timeout called here from St. Andrew's. Tikurakotu have swung this around to gain a 9-7 to seven lead. Still four minutes to play, but at the moment the issue is Waiheke Rio. And how do you guard her? Do you find a new matchup? Do you allow her to shoot it? These will be the questions that St. Andrews are asking. Offensively, not a lot going for them at the moment. A lot of stagnation and congestion for them. Obviously, Ophelia Powell is a really good downhill driver. Hasn't been given a lot of space to work at the moment. And Ava Jones seems to be their focal point. We'd we'll like to see the ball get in her hands a little bit more as well. All things to discuss. Wahiki Rio at the line for a Takura Kotu. No good on that one. St. Andrews now in the bonus for fouls. So a huge disparity in Hutters. Eight for St. Andrews and only two for Takotu. Every time there's a foul, Takotu will get two free throws, which is not going to work in St. Andrews' favour. Ava Jones will come off the on-ball now. Nice dish to Ella and a kick out. Philia Powell, they could really use that one. Nahirata Homaha comes up with the rebound. And Waheke Rio. Pulling Ophelia Powell. Can I have this dance? Waikimi here needed to shoot that one. I don't know if it's been recognized. Yeah, shot clock violation. Better defensive effort from St. Andrews there. Able to contain Waikiki Rio for a possession. Now it's about what they do to execute offensively. Ava Jones, absolute dish and one. The hoop and the harm for Ophelia Powell. Stack finding their feet just a little bit more. Absolute dime from the youngster. And tough finish for Ophelia Powell. Plays definitely above her size. Can't cut the lead to one, though. Captain Ella Sharp gets that one to go. Should be 10-9, I believe. Nice touch around the rim. By Higirio. Playing with her lunch. Can't finish that one. Ophelia Powell doing a relatively good job at containing Waihike. Forcing him, her into a tougher shot than before. Power. 
possession is going to go with Stack. And Ella Sharp, very smart to recognize the mismatch. She saw straight away the smaller Kali Cow that guarded her. But oh my goodness, an offensive foul call. Recognized the mismatch, but did not get the fruits of that labor. Confusion all around, I believe. And that'll be two shots for Takura Kotu. An opportunity to put themselves up three now. No good on that first Kuru Toutoku. Splits the pier. Ella Sharp looking for Ava Jones to feast up down low. Why Kimmy here? Bodies her. Ella Sharp, can she get it to go? No, she can't. Takura Kotu with absolute momentum and composure these last few minutes. Waikemi here rejects the handoff. Looks to go downhill against a smaller pal. Stops and pops. Can't get the roll. These are huge positions here for St. Andrews College. Make or break at the moment. No luck from beyond the arc. Just under two minutes to go to Kirikotu in control. Why Hiki Rio? Zigs and zags, but cannot get the finish. What can Ophelia Powell cook up here? Looks to go downhill. Tough shot. But gets the end one. Goodness me. That was impressive. See that again. Almost circus shot like. Probably didn't expect the finish herself. Gives us a little flex to the camera. Makes the Kuru Totoko, and it's an even game. One minute 40 to go. Plenty of time. Why Kimmy here uses her jab step. Ophelia Powell is a big time player. Back to back blocks for Ophelia Powell. Heart on the line. The and one, a block and a block. The clutch minutes are her time. We're gonna see a timeout from Takura Kotu to talk things over. Obviously it becomes a little bit more tactical at the moment. You don't have a coach to call the shots for you. You've got a minute, 26 to go. Obviously St. Andrews are in the bonus and they're one foul away from awarding not only two free throws per position on every foul for Takura Kotu. It's about strategy and playing, playing smart in this last minute and a half. Love to see Ophelia Powell come to life even more. It's her moment to shine. Ophelia Powell is number one, and Rafferty is number 23. For those of you at home who haven't had a yes to be able to tell them apart. <laughs> Waiheke Rio, no good on that one. And the ball is in the hands of the current moment's superstar, Ophelia Powell. And it is her moment, man. She came to play, and she does not want to lose this ball game. One point lead at the moment, an aggressive switch onto Waikimi here. And one of those twins is whistled for Ahara. So let's see that once again. I'm not going to make a comment on the foul call because that is not within my jurisdiction. Waikimi here has a chance to even Stevens things up, and she does. And I believe because this is the 10th foul, they not only get one more free throw, but they get possession as well, which could be huge for Takura Kotu. Good on the second, and possession back. Dangerous for St. Andrews have to play a perfect possession of defense here. Nahirata Homaha. Wahikirio, this will be the hard one to contain. Athletic as ever, can't get the finish. And fouls on the rebound. Stack live to see another position. There was no hiding that, Hutter. Forty-five seconds now. We're gonna see a few positions left in this ball game. Ophelia Powell wants it. She wants it now. Can't draw the Hutter. Can her sister be the clutch one this time? No, she can't. No good on that Kuru Fifi Rua. 30 seconds now. Stack 
want to avoid giving away any fouls. They're in a desperate position to get a stop now. Philly Powell tasked with guarding Waiheke Rio. Looks for the backdoor cut, errant pass. Can't get the defensive rebound and this given another shot clock position. Takura Kotu. Three ball on the way. St. Andrews now with seven seconds to score. Waiheke Rio all over her. We've got four, three. Ava Jones lets one go. Can't get it to go. And St. Andrews are delivered their first loss of the day to Kurakotu in an epic fight to get the 13 to 12 win over a very strong St. Andrews College side. They'll be super happy with that one. We're gonna take a quick break. And in the next, we have an absolute ball game between Hutt Valley and Puhikoi High School. Stick around for that. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Hey, Tom, it's been a while. Where have you been? Sorry, man, I've been busy. Come and see what we have been doing. It's been a few years since we were here for the launch of the very first Hoops in Schools in South Auckland. Tell me what sort of impact these hoops have had on the school. Every day the kids play outside, um, morning, afternoon, morning tea, lunch times. Um, they're always outside playing basketball. We also run a sports academy. For an hour a day, um, half the group is doing basketball and the other half is off doing another sport. So we use it all the time. <laughs> That's good that they're being used. Uh, what about after school and the weekends and things? Is it uh, somewhere where you know the community can kind of come together and play some basketball? Yeah, so um, after school we have our after school program who use this one, um, the one behind us quite a lot. Um, and then our gates are always open for the community to use all of the courts and um, facilities here. So, awesome. yeah, they're getting used quite a lot, especially on days like this. What do you think this facility means to the kids to have a hoop like this at their school? I think it's awesome. Um, like you said, the accessibility sometimes um, if they're playing in like the community courts, there's the older kids or the, the adults that are kind of taking up the court. So to have it here at school, um, they're always using it. They don't feel pressured to be moving off anytime soon. And yeah, it's nice to see them using a lot of it. Um, I've seen massive numbers grow. Eh? Like uh, we started in the beginning of the year, we started a holiday camp and our numbers were like 20 kids. And now we've got 70 kids in the last holiday camp we just had. The interest has grown heaps. Having these basketball hoops out here just helps because a lot of the kids don't get that outside of school. Yep. So um, for them to be able to come and have a space where they can just fall and especially in the holidays. And are you guys running any sort of competitions outside of school that the kids are able to get into? Whakahaere uh, mātou, ko mātou kura i te tahi kaupapa, poitū kohu ki te Wharehākina Kina o Moana Ni Akiwa, ki te Māngere Town Centre. Um, ki reira ka whakapakiri pūkenga mātou, ka prakatihi, a ka ako rātou i ngā tiri. Whakahaere mātou i te tahi whakataitai ki te taha o Legacy Wildcats. Um, ki reira ka tākoro rātou me e tahi atu kura o tēnei rohe o Māngere. Kia ora, good evening everybody. Welcome to the tail end of day one of the Basketball New Zealand 3 on 3 Secondary School Nationals. Second to last round here at the Akotangi Sports Centre in Windy Wellington. I'm Maya Williamson and today, tonight we have Pukekohe High versus Hibs Boys School. Unfortunately don't have the numbers for Hibs so we're just going to call them Hibs. Uh, for them, we have Aubrey Chunga, Bruno Thompson, Noah Wright, Anaki, Isabella, and Cooper Bakuru. 
And for Pukekohe, we have Riley Fern, Harry Kelso, Zeke Otunuku, Nathaniel Scott, and Braden Northcott. Haven't seen Pukekohe yet today for myself, so I'm excited to see how they play. Saw Herbs earlier today, and they put on an absolute shooting display. Excited to see if this one can unfold once again. Nice early defense from Pukekohe, disallowing Hibs to even get into any offensive sets at all. A lot of contact on that one, but nothing called. They come up with their offensive two up and nonetheless. Kuru Fifirua on its way, and yes! Leather through lace from beyond the arc. I'm hoping that this continues on its trend. Nathaniel Short goes downhill, tries to find the dime but cannot. Only one second. They've really got to pull something here. And couldn't find anything before the buzzer went off. Turnover and Hibbs ball up the top. Nice little give and go action. Then a flare screen. Open as a bird. Decides to go downhill. A lot of power on that one. Results in the huddle. He'll go to the line for uh, Kuru Totaku. See that here once again. Just comes across from that weak side. A little bit too late. Rotates his body. Commits the hutter. Back tapper. But gets his offensive two up and an absolute dime down to Hibbs. 8 3 2. Early lead. Eight and a half minutes. Still left to go. Pukakoe High School. Nathaniel Short forces that one. Gets his rebound, but can't get that one to go either. Going to see a foul call. I believe it's going to be a moving screen. I think I've seen one in almost every game that I've commentated this round. A moving screen. Maybe something that we need to be coaching a little bit better throughout the country, possibly. I know we see a few of those on the international stage, even at the Tall Blacks level. Something that our country needs to work on in general, possibly. Speaking of the Tall Blacks. Make sure you keep up to date with the, the 3x3 tour at the moment. You can watch it on YouTube and keep up to date with the scores on Basketball New Zealand's Instagram. Nice feed down low. Tough finish. Nice little floater from Harry Kelso. Hibbs now looking to go downhill, but great perimeter defense. Hibbs didn't even touch the paint on that position. Just swarming defense from Pukekohe. And a big swat there from Hibbs. Huge toe to disallow an easy bucket. Not in my house, he says. Pukekohe looking a little bit different without the infamous Brody Perry and his luscious locks. They qualified for secondary school nationals for the first time last year, led by him, which was really cool to see. And nice to see that they're continuing a good trajectory of basketball. Kuru Fifirua, short. Imagine these boys are pretty tired after a long day of playing. Unfortunately for them, another day tomorrow. Nathaniel Short uses the half spin. No good from beyond the arc for Zeke Otunuku. And again, swarming perimeter defense from Pukekohe. Hibbs just can't find a lot of luck. A great wall up, a lot of contact on that, and a travel called. It's just see that one more time. Nathaniel does a really good job just to stay his ground, have legal contact, and force a turnover. Low scoring game, six and a half minutes to go and only 4-3. Both teams doing a very good job defensively at disallowing either team to get in any offensive rhythm and nothing easy is coming for these guys. A lot of par, a lot of contact on that. But don't believe a foul was called. Pukekohe High School with possession now. They trail by one. Ball into the hands of Nathaniel Short. Dime to the corner. Only got two seconds to work with. Gets him up in the air, but smokes the bunny. Everything but. Pukekohe now. Looking to go downhill. Manages to maintain his balance, but 
That was an easy call for the referees. Just extends out that elbow. Does Zeke Otunuku. See that one more time. I oh, can't really see it from that angle, but extended his elbow all the way out. That's an automatic easy call for the referees. Shout out Team Grey who put in some extra mahi today. Doing a very good job at refereeing these games. We wouldn't be here without you guys. Kuru Fifi Rua. Good from beyond the arc. Like I said earlier, these guys had an absolute shooting display in the other game that I commentated for them in the morning. Three seconds in the keep for Pukekohe. I wish I was cool enough to do Mike Breen's bang in this moment. Good give and go. Goes downhill. But off the tupper. Daniel Short surveys his options. Great kick out. Got to let that one fly. Not a lot of luck from beyond the arc. I was going to say from either team until he hit that one. Kuru Fifi Rua, number two. 8-3 now. It's amazing what a two-point shot can do to this game. Can absolutely transform. It's super valuable in the game of 3x3. I've spoken to a lot to Pete Van Hassel as he's from Christchurch. And he just speaks about the weight of which the two-point shot has and how far you can get in the 3x3 game if you have a solid two-point shot. A lot of contact on the drive from Harry Calso. Earns himself a trip to the charity stripe. Like the verticality, but hands came down. Pukakoi have a chance to edge a little bit closer. 8-4, four, four and a half minutes left to go. Second to last round of the day. Don't go anywhere after this one. We have the great girls matchup coming after this. Another Hutter called. A lot of fouls going on here early. Obviously, 3x3, a very physical game, but there is a degree of discipline that comes to it. Could have if you do it, no good. But I like the wide open look. Teams going under on that screen quite a lot. We saw Palmerston Boy, North Boys High School running that same offense. Teams going under on those screens too. Utilizes the shot fake really well. Gets the defender up in the air. Lackluster finishing early for these boys today. Kakoi cuts the lead now. 8-5. Just under four minutes to go. Travel called against Hibbs. As you see that tough finish there from Pukakoi that cut the lead to three. Shout out to our sponsors, Bailey's and Caltex. The Girls Got Game Initiative and shout out to Whakata Māori for allowing this entire live stream to happen means that you at home can watch the people you love play what they love to do. Another hutter called Hibs up to two now. Pukkoi up to three, sorry. Pukkoi up to four. Gain a lot of physicality. Three and a half minutes to go. Nathaniel Short sizes up his competition. An easy late. 8-6 now. Pukakoi chipping away at this lead. This is an important position for Hibs. And Pukakoi, a lot of physicality on that perimeter defense. Harry Kelso looks to go again. Great dish off pass. And a whole bunch of contact on that one. Zeke Otunuku being the guy these last few minutes. Great recognition from Harry Kelso. Two bodies flying at him in the last, with a desperate attempt to contest that. Could cut the lead to one here. And does not. Basketball is really much like a game of chess. You've probably heard this a million times over Phil Jackson's quarter of the century. And we've seen a lot of that today. A lot of momentum shifts. Team starting out strong and then giving up the momentum once again. Um, representative of this game, Pukakoi obviously started the game down by about five, but now clawing their way back. Opportunity to tie now. Great on ball defense from Hibbs. Only five seconds to work with now, and they haven't got a paint touch yet. Zeke Otunuku forces it out. Shot's got to go up. Hibbs with a big rebound. 
No rush for them. And Pukakoi defends that one nicely. Check ball up the top. Little give and go action. Only three seconds to work with. They're going to have to throw something up. Not sure if there's any clock awareness happening at the moment. And there is not as they're whistled for a shot clock violation. No comms from the bench, unfortunately. A lot of off-ball action happening. Zeke Otunuku loves to get downhill. Smacked out of bounds by Hibbs. And ball will go back in the position of Pukakoi with a full shot clock. Which is an absolute delight for them. Chance to cut the lead to one or tie it with a three ball. Two ball, sorry. Daniel Short knows, can't connect. Hibbs, offense to slow down a lot for them. Pukakoi just swarming perimeter defense. It's disallowed them to get anything. As I say that though, just smokes the bunny. Believes he's stepped out of bounds. Clear frustration with that one. Obviously Hibbs scored at a high capacity to start the game and that's just slowed down in these last few minutes. Credit to Pukakoi's great perimeter defense. Nathaniel Short can't get the layup. Low post catch and nice blind side cut. A lot of contact on that one and the Hutter is rightfully earned. A trip to the line for Hibbs could put them up three. Absolute dime. Smoked him. Smoked him. Smashed him, bro, for those that get the reference. 9 6 now. Just over a minute to play. Pukakoi got to start being efficient and executing on these offensive positions right on cue. Cute, Harry Kelsey. Dime, absolute dime. Can't make the layup. Nothing worse than delivering a dime to your teammate who doesn't make the layup. I want to say the lead, yeah, it should be 9 7, not 8 7. It's been corrected now. Foul whistled. Tensions are high. 30 seconds to go. It's only a two point game. This could go anyway. My predictions for the end of games have been far from correct, so I'm just not even going to try and say anything. Timeout called. Not sure who called it. Pukakoi high now. I have to be tactical, like we said. The offensive positions are important because they are the team that is trailing. But the defense is just as important. Obviously, five fouls to the two away from the bonus, which is giving, Puk which would give Hibbs two free throws. Want to avoid putting themselves in some kind of vulnerable position. What an absolute venue we have been blessed with here in Wellington, the Ako Tangi Sports Centre. Home of the Wellington Saints. My second favourite sales NBL team behind the mighty Canterbury Rams. Ball will be with Pukakoi up the top. Chance to tie the game here. Nathaniel Short gets to the rim, drops the dime. Harry Kelso. Is the man of the moment. Ties things up. 17 seconds on the clock. Am I going to see my first overtime? Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, no basket. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't clear from beyond the arc. Puka Koei now. They have a chance to take the lead. Are we going to see an overtime finish? My first one of the day. Harry Kelso. He... <laughs> is the man of the moment. He saw the scoreboard and he said, let me do something about that. Huge bucket for Harry Kelso. And a chance to extend the lead once again to two. And timeout called by Hibbs. So a complete flip of the switch. That was not the tail of the tape earlier in the game. Hibbs had all the momentum to begin with, but again, a game of chess. And Pukakoi completely switching this momentum Harry Kelso with ice in his veins. Hibbs now have to be smart, depending on whether or not this free throw goes in, about how they 
attack offensively. I would love to see an overtime finish. You can't get everything you want in life, but I haven't seen one yet today. I would love to experience that. So come on, do us a solid, Pukakoi. Harry Kauso with the big shot at the line. Obviously, Hibbs, no fouls to give either. Pukakoi do have one to give. Can't get that one to go. It's all on Hibbs now. They have to get a bucket. And they fire one away. Far too long. And Pukakoi changed the tail of the tape to come back and get a last second win over Hibbs. 10 to nine. If you want to see some more exciting basketball, stick around for the last round of the day. Hamilton Girls High versus Hastings Girls High. See you soon. Global warming is incredibly serious. We need to cut emissions, but we need to also absorb carbon out of the atmosphere. Growing trees is the only tool we have in the toolbox for taking carbon out of the atmosphere that we can do at scale. Pinus radiata takes carbon out of the atmosphere at about five to 10 times the rate of native planting. And so what New Zealand Carbon Farming are doing is planting the Pinus radiata to absorb the carbon, and then they're transitioning that forest into native forests so that we get the biodiversity benefit. Summer Tournament 2024 on Māori Active. Find us on YouTube. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower DSI school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through, through a tough time. It's a real privilege, but you know, for us, we want to see others get involved with it. This is not a selfish thing for Apollo. This is about how can we get, um, whether it's construction or other businesses, to get involved in this. There's a lot of things that kids miss out on. And so to have businesses step up and want to be involved and to help is a game changer for schools. It really is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Go ahead, one more bid. Thank you. We're gonna go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Bailey's finding buyers that others can't. I just wanna welcome everyone here today, all you beautiful woman, all you people. And welcome everyone, no my hot my. Welcome back to the very last game of the day. Day one here at 3x3 Secondary School Nationals. 
has been a blinder. We've had so many exciting games here in the Windy City at Ako Tangi Sports Centre. And we're finishing on a high note. Hamilton Girls High versus Hastings Girls High. A highly anticipated matchup between these two teams. With Hamilton Girls, we have Tima Pata Walker, Caitlin Hull, Keja Mira, Miringa Orangi, and Balari Teresa, as well as Wallace Taylor. For Hastings Girls High, we have Nadia Tatiri, T. Rokura Harris, Mikey Thompson, Charlotte Tulea, and Peyton Tuala Fata. Again, like I said, a highly anticipated matchup, these two schools. And we've seen some brilliant girls basketball here today. If you want to see some more great basketball, make sure you tune back in in Fakata Māori tomorrow from 10 a.m. We have our finals tomorrow. So just a short weekend of basketball, but a great weekend of basketball. Nonetheless, we get underway shortly. This Hamilton girls high side placed third at secondary school nationals last year and had a very close semi-final. Could have been a silver or gold medal. Had a couple other things gone their way. Referees giving the thumbs up. So for our last game of the day, we're underway. Tima Para Walker to Caitlin Hull. Kudu Fafi Rua, no good. But offensive Tūrapa, that has been a theme of today. Teams generating so many second chance opportunities from offensive Tūrapas. Don't know if that is a good thing or indicating a bad boxing out skill as a country. Downhill penetration defended well by Tima Para Walker. Keja will clean that one up. Keja, interestingly enough, transferred from Hastings Girls High to Hamilton Girls High this year. So going against her alma mater, you could say. Absolutely cooks and gets to the paint, but can't finish that one. Still scoreless to begin this game. Just over 30 seconds have passed. Nice move, but again, can't convert. I feel like I've said that a few times already. Tima Pata Walker will take the on ball from Caitlin Hull. And pull from beyond the arc. Offensive two dupper, number two for Caitlin Hull. And puts the points on the board. Mikey Thompson, nowhere to go. Defended well. Decides I'm going to shoot it. Oh, yep, you might as well if you're going to do that. One all now. Keja and Nadia, obviously old friends. Big part of the ex Hastings Girls High team from last year. Caitlin Hull with a nice little finish. Nadia was huge in their earlier game that I commentated. Had a few trades, Caitlin Clark style. Got downhill really nicely, seemed to be their focal point of their offense. Caitlin Hull generating offense out of that low post position. And Keja will get downhill on her right hand. Keja, a huge part of the under 15 Wakato team that won under 15 national championships last year and was in the tournament team. Super shifty guard, really casual approach. But super nice for the 3x3 game. Usually a very good two-point shooter as well. Closes out on her old friend. No good from beyond the arc. Hamilton girls, Tima Pata Walker will pull. Caitlin Hull, absolute cleanup crew from her today. Tima Pata Walker spins and gets her own rebound and gets the hut up. So a lot of second chance opportunities for Hamilton Girls High early. Only been a few minutes, but Hastings Girls High probably seeking to put some bodies on and disallow those second chance opportunities. Hamilton Girls earning their selves a trip to the stripe for that very reason. And that's good. Tim Pata Walker putting nails in it a little further. 4-1. Hastings seeking a bucket. Charlotte too loud. We'll get one to go. Edges at that lead just ever so slightly. Behind the back. Shake and bake. Bellati Teresa. Not in Tima Pata Walker's house. Extra pass. Could if if you do it is no good. But what a block from Tima Pata Walker. Charlotte Tulao tries to boomerang it. Oh. Referees whistled for a violation. I can't say exactly, know for sure what that violation was. Hamilton girls come up with the possession. Nonetheless, old friends Keja and Nadia go at it. A lot of physicality in that battle. Utilising the shot fake well. 
And a nice little finger roll. Hamilton girls put themselves up by four. Nadia looks to answer, but stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Absolute pet peeve. Hate when that happens. The baseline and the sideline serve as extra defenders. Caitlin Hull operating once again out of that high post position. Keja can't get the floater to go, but Caitlin Hull is right there for cleanup clue as always. And Nadia looking to go downhill. Uses her athleticism, forces something. Hamilton girls high, looking in control, looking smooth, getting to the rim. Nadia ordering her away. Back to a cut is good for Mike it with a great pass from Charlotte Tulao. Big seal inside here. And a nice, tough finish. Hastings girls can't afford to just trade buckets at the moment. They've got to get a stop on the defensive end as well. 7-3 to Hamilton girls. Just under six minutes to go in day one of the 3 3 Secondary School Nationals. Nadia left alone. Caitlin Clark-esque. She's like that. 7-5 now. Edging away that lead ever so slightly. But Ahara committed. So that, once again, you cannot afford to leave her open. I believe people used to say that about me in my playing days. Totally kidding. Totally kidding. She got the top. Keja and Nadia. Keja, step back. Bobby Jack. That is what she likes. You don't want to give her too many of those either. She is a prolific two-point shooter. And a great answer from Hamilton girls to extend their lead out once again. Nadia will pull. Can she get two in a row? She cannot. Huge rebound from Timapata Walker. Keja looking to get another one. Takes the physicality from Nadia. We've got 5.8 seconds on the shot clock. I'm really liking this guard to guard matchup. And Timapata Walker will just pull straight away. And good from the Kuru. Fifi Rua. 11-5 now. Hamilton girls starting to pull away with it. Hastings going to have to work some magic now. Caitlin Hull, ill-disciplined, just putting her hands down. Did a relatively good job to stay in front initially, but just brings those hands down to allow a hara and a trip to the Kuru Totuku line for Charlotte Tulao. No good on that one. Timapara Walker Undersized, but comes up with a rebound. Keja, second tray of the game. Leather through lace. Just how she likes it. 13-5 now. Hamilton girls pulling away with it a little bit. Caitlin Hull defends that well. Can Keja go for three? Ooh, she cannot. I think somebody opened a door in here or something. A little bit of breeze. But that is a shot you're happy with because she is a high-quality two-point shooter. And if you can get... One open for her after she hit two. Then you'll be happy with that. Down screen to get Mikey open. Nadia rejects it. Tries to go downhill herself. Great use of the footwork. Kaja got a hand in that one. Hastings girls come up with the offensive two up. Swarming defense from Timapata Walker. Forcing these guys to play from the white line with three seconds to go. Nadia stops and pops. Great use of her balance. But can't get the finish, unfortunately. Keja, casual, swag, buckets. 14-5 now. Hamilton girls able to get the shots they want. Hastings girls cannot. Great backdoor cut, but can't get the layup to go. Timapata Walker, another offensive two up, but that might be three or four from her. And then Keja comes up with one of her own. And another offensive two-dupper. Every player on the floor for Hamilton girls right now got an offensive two-dupper in that position. Hastings girls wanting to put bodies on them, but not only that, putting bodies on them early. Got to be proactive with your work to get the fruits of the labour. Flare screen for Nadia. Charlotte Tulia will be the beneficiary of that kick-out pass. Nowhere to go for Hastings at the moment. Didn't even touch the paint in that position. That should be shot clock violation. Basketball can be very hard to play. You don't get in the paint. 
the Rohikuru. Tima Pata Walker with ease on her right hand. Double digit lead now for Hamilton girls. That's running away as Nadia desperate not to let it get away, but just can't get that one off the back of the tapa. Always the worst feeling and a forced error from Hamilton girls. Will give Hastings the position. Two and a half minutes left to go in day one. But like we said, day two is filled with arguably even better action with our playoff game starting. And obviously at the tomorrow, someone will be co coined the three-on-three -three secondary school nationals champion. Make sure you tune in for that at the end of the day tomorrow. Great wall-up defense from Caitlin Hull. And downhill we go. Oh, the rim just not these guys' friend today. Hamilton girls taking their time. Still got seven seconds to work with. The jab step, lay, no good. Out of bounds, going to be Hastings ball. Just two minutes and some change. Horn set, one of the most common in three on three. Right on ball defense from Kasia there, but ref not happy with her hands. Good switch. Nadia taking a lot of physicality. Just not having some luck. Bowser here in frustration, rightfully so. Nice two-man game between Caitlin Hull and Kasia. And a lovely finish around the rim. 16-5 now. Hastings girls have been scoreless the last few minutes. Not a finish to the game that they were wanting. Kasia utilizes her shot fake and her body really well. Can't get the finish to go, unfortunately. Nadia is just going to pull. A lot of physicality on that perimeter. Caitlin Hull sizes up her matchup. Backdoor cut from Kasia. And we have a sub for Hastings girls. Someone not wearing their mouth guard. Classic mistake. One we see quite often and one I got whistled for far too many times in high school myself. Sorry to all the team grey that had to put up with me. Obviously not stoked is Nadia. Been a tough fight for these girls today. Kasia for her third. No good. Timapata Walker loves an offensive rebound today. And Kasia, the beneficiary of that offensive rebound. 17-5 now for Hamilton girls. Under a minute to go. And it's just about putting the final nails in the coffin, really, for these team. No good on that Kurefefirua attempt. Timapata looking to go downhill. A little sidestep and a great touch off the back of the tapa. 18-5 now. Hastings girls still giving it a go, but got some tired legs. I mean, they've played a full day of basketball. I believe this is probably game number four for both of these guys. And if you haven't played 3x3 before, little secret, it's very tiring. So I wouldn't be surprised if we've got some tired legs and tired bodies here today. 19-5, Hamilton girls. Hastings trying to finish it off. Still competing to the end of the game. And they get one to go. And that will finish the score. And will finish the game. The 19-6 win. Very comfortable from Hamilton girls. And a wonderful performance over the Hastings girls side. 19-6. That is all for the basketball that we have today. But luckily for you guys, we have a full day of basketball coming tomorrow. Same time, 10 a.m. to 5 o'clock tomorrow. We will have a new... 3x3 Senior Schools Basketball New Zealand champion at the end of the day tomorrow. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.